Hello, hello everybody. We are going to continue our Pokemon Coliseum adventure. Last time, I do believe that we finished chasing down Venus and then raided the creepy Pokemon lab, of which the Pokemon Professor of Evil Ein just utterly smacked me to death. I managed to beat him, but I had to faint Raikou. Luckily, I have been informed by chat that Raikou, at least if you do not capture him, has two more appearances. One more mandatory and then one optional. If we don't get him in this mandatory one, I don't think we're getting Raikou. Uh, also, I just gotta say, uh, the water effects, I like the water effects. They just look nice. They just look nice. But, after we basically got utterly annihilated by Professor Ein, we discovered that the real Gam Tower, utterly strange name, has been opened up. And uh, we immediately went left and found uh, Mirror B, who we beat again. But he actually put up a decent fight. Also, is it just me or are there eyes on this carpet? I can't believe the Pokemon Illuminati is here. But, yeah. We're gonna head in. Presumably fight Dakim, the weird Hulk guy that was there for a scene. Venus and Ein again. And I'm going to presume Nascour, their big ol' re Big ol' reader. This is, they're, they're not a library. Brain. We're going to eventually fight him. I'm going to assume that Ein is the final boss of this Colosseum Tower. And then Nascour is going to be like, ha ha ha, this is my plan, come fight me. And then we're gonna fight like on top of a volcano or something. I'm half expecting like Groudon and Kyogre to appear because they were also on the cover. If the legendary beasts be here from cover land, uh, so should those two, but... Let's a go. Let's a go. Obviously, we're gonna go to the right. And who should be here? Dakim or Venus? Interesting. Uh, that's kind of odd. Hello, Dakim. Why weren't you just down there in that room? Why did you need two to come up here? Okie dokie. I completely forget what Pokemon you had. By the way, I also did a bit of grinding, except for Bianca. Because I am a fool. Just realized that all my Pokemon are dudes, except for the legendaries. Weird. But, yeah, did a bit of grinding. So, we're not fully on par with them, but hopefully we're not gonna get utterly thrashed. Uh, and, uh, I basically, I just need to annihilate you because I, I... Well, you're probably gonna have a Shadow Pokemon again. Like, I think Mirror B had another one. Let's see. What what voice did I give you? Da ha 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 ha! Your luck ran out when you showed up before me. Your stab at adventures got on long enough! I completely forget what voice I gave this guy. Again, that face. <laughs> it's so weird looking. Like, not bad, just odd. Unexpected in this game. Clay doll, we haven't run into you before. And uh, Fortress. I forget what. I like completely forget what Clay doll is. Again. I think it's Psychic Rock? I. Hmm. I guess blast you. Also, we got Psychic. Let's see how good it does. A how dare you. You protected yourself. I wonder if it would work twice. If, like, if two Pokemon attack the same Protect target at the same time. Is that why you use Protect? Didn't do much, but how, much, how about Espeon? A little bit more. Oh, yeah, you bastard. And I'm just going to psychic you again. 
Oh, I go first this time. Die. Oh, it's not very effective. Then again, you're... S oh, yeah, because you're steel, and steel is stupid. It's tinfoil. Tinfoil. It protects against psychic attacks. And of course you survived. Gonna use, uh, the Earthquake again? Oh, no, you're gonna use Sunny Day. If I ever... If one of my Pokemon faint and I throw out Father, you're doomed. And now you use. But Clay Doll is floating, so it's not gonna do anything, which is kind of weird. Doesn't Fortress also have Levitate? Or do, is it a weird one where it technically doesn't? The sunlight is strong. I feel like... Don't... <laughs> hey, you. Don't have Shadow Gear... Uh, not Giratina. Shadow Groudon just out of nowhere. I'll be very upset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should kill it. Get it out of the way. And uh, I'll just use a... Hyper Potion. You're gonna use that. <laughs> the moment that I used a Hyper Potion, I was just like, wait a minute, they can do that too. Damn it. <laughs> this was like a, a moment of retrospection. I was like, hmm. I did a Hyper Potion. They can do a Hyper Potion, can't they? Hmm. Honestly, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm a fool. I wanted to do return, not swift. But oh well. And it protected itself. Does this mean that Clay Doll is going to use... How dare you? Is going to use Earthquake, because last time... Oh, you flinched. Aha! You fool! All right, now I'm going to bite you, and uh, I guess we'll swift again, get some damage in. Might as well. Espeon saw the future. That means it doesn't get a turn, but what the hell is he gonna throw out after is the question. The horror, the horror. The horrific question. Flygon. I completely forget what your typing is. Like, completely. I hate Fortress. I mean, I could have swapped out Lammy, but then he would have been thrown into an Earthquake. Do you also have Levitate Flygon, you bitch? He's just the Levitation Man. That's all that he is. Hmm, I'm gonna be... Gonna do both. No, not you. We shall do both. Just because we can. Oh boy, solar beam. And it's gonna be powered up by the sunny sunshine. Oh boy. Didn't do as much damage as I thought it was. Okay. <laughs> you mean to say that sunny day doesn't power up solar beam all that much? What? That weirds me out for some reason. And the sunlight faded. Or does Sunny Day only, like, I don't know, supercharge? Solar Beam? Because a Solar Beam, the move where you need to charge up beforehand, or is it charge up after? Also, I just noticed that Plygon's feet look like little slippers. Like it's wearing them. It's adorable. Keep using Earthquake, I guess. You're not doing that much damage. Not even against Espeon. Granted, that's like a good fourth of the health bar, but still. Not terrible, all things considered. And we're just gonna Psychic, uh... I guess Psybeam. If it lives so well, it... Mm. Please die. Because I want to save some of my Psychic for the scary things. Good. Good job, Espeon. Espeon did good. Now what the hell is he going to throw out next? Another levitation monster. Good job, Bianca. Whizcash. You look utterly tiny. 
What are you? Both in the uh, respects of groundwater, I presume? Also has levitate, I also presume. Oh, hey, it actually hit! Huzzah! What glory! Hmm. We're gonna do this again, because we can. At least this guy... One of these days, that earthquake is gonna crit. He's... Did I jinx myself? Is this the time where it crits? Nah, just normal. Protected itself. Yeah, we saw that coming. Not terrible. And uh, I am mostly amused by this, so I think we're going to uh, blast the wish cache. Is the wish cache going to use Earthquake now? Hey, get a crit and make it hilarious. <laughs> I am a god! <laughs> you are probably going to do Earthquake as well. You're just Earthquake Man. He really is the uh, diddly D Hulk. I don't really care about that, like... Because Screech is the super-duper lower-your-defense move. Which I guess could be good, except that I don't really know the attack typings of moves. Like, I assume Bite is normal type. Well, not normal type, I mean, like... Bite uses the attack stat instead of special attack, I presume. But it could also be a special attack instead, because it utilizes dark magics or something. Psychic is obviously special attack, but like, what about Hydro Pump? Would that be a special attack? Or would it be physical? The water looks pretty physical, if you ask me, so I'm just not gonna bother with Screech. I'm not gonna bother. That is strategy, and I am but a fool. Now throw out your next minion. Houndoom! Neat! That's gonna do nothing because... <laughs> oh shit. You're a fire dark type. Dark is good against them. Huh. Well, I'm going to confuse Ray you. And... I guess I beam you. It's the final one, so... All in all... Again... At, at least I got a crit that I was asking for. <laughs> that one was <laughs> just like insult to injury. And it's still sunny day, isn't it? So that's going to do a lot of damage. I, I was going to ask, why didn't you use a dark type move, dark type fire type? N apparently it knew more than me. Uh, and now we're going to murder you. Wouldn't it be hilarious if... ba 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 if, like, Aurora Beam, Ice-type, was strong against fire. It won't. But it would be hilarious. And I'm not gonna... I'm not going to... Ba ba ba. Re use a revive on Espeon. The experience we would get from Howdoom is not really all that enough for me get smacked, and now you're gonna get super smacked by a surf. For some reason, you weren't nearly as difficult as I remember Mirror B being. Okie doke. But I like that. That was a nice easing back in. Gah! Why'd I lose to this punk? Because I am a god. I called down a crit. You look horrifically tall from this angle. In all the time I've been battling, my only losses came at the hands of Master Nascar and you. Now take this. It's your passport to terror and despair! Was that Grin ID badge? 
If you're thinking of turning back, now's the time to do it. Go home to mommy. <laughs> and then he just lumbers on out, like he, without a care in the world. Dakim is so weird because we didn't have him at all anywhere at any time when it comes to this game. Mirror B, he was instrumental to the beginning of the game. Ayn was referenced all over the place through the files, as well as by many characters. Venus, like, teamed up with Ayn for a little bit there, and also, like, played a, a big role in the Undercity. Meanwhile, Dakim feels like one giant big-lipped alligator moment as a cypher boss. It's like they were making the game, and they're like, oh no, we haven't introduced the, like, time flutes and the battle mountain in terms of story. Quick, throw in a giant tribal wild man as a cypher boss who doesn't talk to anyone, isn't referenced anywhere else. Dakim is Dakim. And looks like Ander was his name? The champion of Generation 5, I think. At least he is a champion in Generation 5. I think Generation 5 has multiple champions because Black and White and then Black and White 2. Well, Black 2, White 2. And now we're going to go down the middle path. I need to take a look at that thing. This is like Grin ID. Let's see. Items? Oh no, green. It's just abbreviated. My brain is just like, Grin? Grin badge? The Incredible Hulk Cypher Agent boss gave me the green badge. That is amusing to me. Oh! I didn't ex I didn't expect this. Uh, just from a game design standpoint, I feel like this should have been in the like opening area, not beyond the bosses, because then that would stop players from doing the thing I did. Especially considering after what you did with the creepy shadow lab, not putting stuff like this in there. Oh, having trouble, are we? Perhaps you're lost in the expanse of this building. Sure. Ah, then I shall be happy to take you. Where am I going to take you? Ho-ho! Oh, well, since you asked, you deserve a reply. Oh. It is your doom! Alright, that's cool. That's amusing to me. Bopin. Didn't expect that. But, amusing. I like that. And these guys really are ninjas. That guy just disguised himself as somebody. You little weirdo man. Guess we'll blast you, psychic you, so we can just be gone, sludge monster. Again, this song is so good. The guitars remind me of Tales of Symphonia. And then Survivor. I don't know your typing, I think it's dark something. Like, I am just terrible with typings. I go by vibes. Sludge Bomb did not really much. Hmm. Yeah, it goes, I guess. Let's just nuke down the Survivor so it can't do anything. And then we'll focus on the Dust Ox. Never mind, Secret Power of the Bug. Bye bye, Survivor. Get blasted. <laughs> Blows up your snake with mind. And another sludge bomb. You are horribly inefficient. Luckily, I'm right next to a healing potion. Potion? Healing station. And just blast him. 
I do like the forehead gem on Espeon Twinkling. I do like that. Oh, I should have done that. I'm an idiot. Then again, Espeon super affected all of them to death. So it's just like, it was a matter of time. Ah, so this is it! Your doom? I just didn't expect them to put a minion in here, and then he's just gone. Like, at first I was worried that I activated something, and I was just like, wait, you're gonna take me someplace? And then it was just a minion trying to kill me. I was just like, ah, this is much better. <laughs> Random fight out of nowhere, much better than just being taken someplace against my will. You know, like Rui got at the beginning of this game. Also, I just realized Rui has just, like, not done anything all that much in this game. She just exists. I wish they gave her more. Alright, good. Just one way to go. Big windy way. Come on, Ayn. I know you're here. Oh, no. We're going to be going to the tower next, aren't we? Great. Oh yes, you're telling me that you'll knock me out of the way? Heh, <laughs> you'll know right away if that's possible by battling me! Artem. Art on. Turn your art on. Hello swine and Delibird. I forget what typing Delibird is. I assume ice normal. Or something like that. Ice at least, because Delibird. Ice flying, maybe. Because I think it can... Can it learn fly? Do I really care about getting a Shadow Deli Bird? I don't think so. It's the strongest. Let's just nuke it from orbit. And yeah, nuke from orbit it is. I have no care to capture a Shadow Deli Bird. Like, even if I was playing this to, like, bring Pokemon over to the main games, I wouldn't really care all that much, really. Am I weird that way where I... I kind of wish there was a New Game Plus feature with Pokemon, where you could reset them to a base level when you take them up to a different game. I think that would be neat. Because that way you could actually use them for things. Because the main problem with, like, taking Pokemon from one game and then booting them on to another is the level curve for, like, mainline Pokemon games are always the same, really. So when you beat a Pokemon game and you're like, I want to take my Pokemon with me, they become too powerful to actively use. And it just feels kind of sad. Woot woot. Oh, I shouldn't have battled! You're right, you shouldn't have. And he's gone. And we'll go heal because we can. Even if we have to watch this loading screen. I do find it kind of amusing that they, like, intentionally had to put this in. Because otherwise, those are just doors connecting rooms. They're doors that lead into an animation, and that amuses me. And I shall continue to just use Espeon and Umbreon as my aces. Just cause. It feels like this game is, like, the main story of this game is going to just stay within the realm of, like, 20 levels of each- of the start. Are you looking to get past this door? Hmm, I'm guessing there's a daredevil in you. Bela! Again, what is with these names? Jumpluff and Sunflora! That Sunflora is a Shadow Pokémon. Also, I find it amusing that, like, once we got to the, like, 
presumed end game of the story. They're like, we're now gonna move the shadow Pokemon to the left. Because all the shadow Pokemon were on the right throughout this entire game. And then we get to a point where all the shadow Pokemon are then on the left. Starting with, like, the underground, I think. And that just amuses me. Also, I gotta say, I love the blinking lights that Umbreon has. Instead of it just being a static, like, color. I like that it's an animation. I enjoy it. Uh, try to annihilate it, and annihilate you. Giga Dream! You monster. Also, your puffs are like JPEGs. You monster. Also, that little bastard went first before me. How dare. And how dare you live! I'm sorry, if I saw a giant flower monster grow before me, that would be terrifying. Yeah, don't care to capture Shadow Sunflora. There, it's just like, there's no real place for a grass type in my team, and I don't care to be slowed down by you, dear game. I don't, I don't care to be slowed down. And Psybeam the Gloom. You bastard. Get blasted, Gloom. Your horrifying face. And now, munch on the jump lock. Touch fuzzy. Get dizzy. Now we'll just try to annihilate you. Well, that's bothersome. Hopefully the bite will annihilate you. <coughs> then you'll use synthesis again, probably. Of which, I doubt that'll be enough to save you from this next attack. Remember, as you annihilate grass types, remember to have a drink of tea. Bye-bye, you silly fool. And another level up for Bianca. Huh? What do you mean I lost? Why? Because I am a god. Even though I've only called that one, that one time. Uh, let's go to the right. Because at least I know that if we run into Ayn, he should act like the other Cypher bosses. Hmm. So yeah, maybe we're gonna fight Nascar here because... We have two keys, and we need th more. Hmm, interesting. I'm interested to see what up is. What is up, dog? I also do like that even though it's playing like a similar animation, like, each animation is tailored. I do like it. Oh, Venus! Let's see. I'll go heal, just get my power points and healing all in order so you can't get, like, lucky. Where you somehow, like, knock out Espeon before. I honestly forget what Pokemon she had. I forget all the Pokemon they had, except for Mr. Ein, and he changed his Pokemon, if I recall. I was told. He swapped out his Lantern, and... He's going to have two lightning rods, I believe, if I was told. I do find it just amusing that this, like, secretary's desk has a... What is it, Rosalia? I forget your name. 
Just has that Pokemon there. Adorable. Well, now we're gonna go fight Venus. But I do find it amusing that, like... <laughs> like, Dakim had Entei, Venus had Suicune, and... Ayn has Raikou. Poor, poor Mirror B only had a Shadow Pseudo Wudo. Oh, well, if it isn't that darling boy and girl, what kept you so long? I'm rather tired of waiting. Now say your goodbyes. This time I really am going to be as serious as serious can be. Oh, yeah, you have the funky, you have the funky dance. And the funky music. That it, it's less funky and more just weird. And Raichu. It's been a bit since we've seen a Raichu. That Raichu is going to be a shadow Pokemon, I think. Unless your levels just jumped up a billion. That seems your levels jumped up a billion. Oh, no. Uh, blast that, uh, that rat into oblivion. Damn it. Nice recovery animation, though. I like that. Uh, the attack animation was a little weird, bouncing on its tail, but at the same time, adorable and cool concept. And now you're also paralyzed. And ha god damn it. My <laughs> the worst thing in the world. Confusion. Oh, it got even worse because I remember chat told me the evils of confusion. We're already that, so. Why? Why? Why would you do that? You're, you're a ghost type. Don't you have a dark move? Don't you have a dark move, Miss Drevis? Should I have left you alive because you were terrible? You would have just used Confuse Ray on me a million times. Huh. Hey, Wigglytuff! Please break through. Damn it. I don't know if calling out to your Pokemon relieves them of confusion. Hmm. Let's see. Do I have, like, a super duper? Heals all status. Hmm. Could have sworn that I had, like, a... Ah, full store. I have exactly one. I don't want to use it. And you, too, used it, because you are a bitch. Only I... Uh, luckily, it seems they only do it once. Now I hope that the game is nice and applies uh, pain liberally. Good. Thank you, game. I don't mind too much a game uh, utterly blasting me in the face. So long as uh, my enemies also get blasted in similar quantities. Oh, hey, critical. Nice. Hit yourself. Aw. And damn it gonna use a tract. Why are you all focusing on Espeon? Attract, confused, and paralyzed. I feel like that should be illegal. I can genuinely think that should just be illegal to do. Also, isn't a tract like two critical hits in a row? Okay, game. You're being kind of kind. Kind of kind. Belossum. Ah, oh, good. Snap to have his confusion and use return. Thank you. That confusion went by really fast. And who are you going to strike with that thunderbolt? We needed a close up of the dancing Raichu. I don't know exactly why, but we did. And I guess blast the blossom. 
I basically have to double up because the paralysis might come in. And you're also going to use Attract. Why? Who are you going to hit with that? Of course. And it's not going to attack now because it's infatuated. Right? Because I think that's how old Attract used to work. Yeah. Sweet kiss. What does that do? Oh. So you're the super annoying fight, I see. I guess Psychic the Raichu if you can. We're gonna attract your Pokemon. We're gonna confuse your Pokemon. We're going to, like, paralyze your Pokemon. You are status effect the bitch, and now Espeon's probably gonna die, I think. Damn it. Because you're just going to focus on Espeon for some reason. Yeah, they just focused on Espeon for some reason. I feel like that's kind of bullshit. Ever so slightly. That just feels stupid. I'm going to send out Father and <laughs> fuck up that Raichu. I don't know why. That just feels kind of stupid. But the game is just like, no. -uh. I should have used that as setup to put Sunny Day on to power up Fire Blast, but oh well. And a critical hit, that doesn't really mean anything. Sadness. And who are you going to send out next? I think you have two more. Or one more. Maybe one more. Melodic. Well, we're gonna have to swap out Father. Wrong one. Alright, I guess... Uh, Confuse Ray, the Melodic will swap out to Lammy. Because that is a water type. Father, I believe, is at least fire, maybe fire ground. Everyone is confused right up in here. Luckily, I also confuse Ray you. And the Raichu is on death's door, so hopefully. All right, is that slot just cursed? Is that just the cursed slot? where everyone goes to be obliterated. Hit yourself, please. Of course you are, because only my Pokemon hit themselves in confusion consistently. You did it once. It's happened like three times for me. Probably gonna happen more. Your status affect the bitch. I'm in love. And there's like no way to get it to not do that. I'm just going to call out to him, see if that works. Hey, does that get rid of anything? Nope, doesn't get rid of anything. Oh, hey, it finally happened, but not. But it was, it was too late because, god fucking damn it. Everyone's already confused, you dickhole. At least I thought they were. Like, I feel confusion would be acceptable if I could call out to my Pokemon to snap them out of it. You're just a big old bother. And I guess we'll just keep doing that, I guess. Thunder Wave. Why do you come? Oh, I break out of confusion super fast. Meanwhile, my Pokemon are in confusion half the match. That's super fair game. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> I hate this. They snap out of confusion super fast. And they just stack status effects. It's bullshit. Why is it also super fast, too? I hate it.
If your Pokemon does like three status moves in a row, you should just have a heart attack and die. Now, suffer from this for the rest of the match as I usually do. Game, will you fuck off? It's not like it ev is even gonna do anything. It's infatuated last I, or last I thought. Lammy hasn't gotten to do anything. Lammy hasn't gotten to do anything! This is just very annoying. I can just go buy more. More Hyper Potions. This is stupid. Uh, I can hit multiple Pokemon with one move, and I don't hit myself a lot because I'm the AI who fit their badar. I hate this. It's so annoying. Lammy hasn't gotten to do anything. Game. Oh, hey, look. The, the, the enemy Pokemon don't hit themselves at all when they're confused. Look. <laughs> This is stupid and wasting my time, and I hate it. I think Umbreon has snapped out of confusion twice. When does, like, fucking infatuation go away, is my question. Because that's stupid as fuck. Of course you do. Of course you, A, don't hit yourself, and B, reconfuse the Pokemon that can't even hit you. Because her de her affection. In my opinion, that should be like an actual status effect, like paralyze and burn stuff so it can only have one active at a time. Lammy doesn't get to do anything. This is stupid. Oh, well, you could use an item to cure that fuck off. I don't even think, like, status effect cure things even work on, like, effect infatuation and, like, confusion. They're not status tags. It's just so annoying. I hate you. And again, snapped out of confusion. I'm gonna do it again just in case. God, you are a boring-ass fight. I hate time-wasting in RPGs. There is no strategy here. Not really. When does a fatuation go away? Is my question. Or is it eternal? And if it is eternal, throw the developer into the moon. Not onto the moon, through the moon. They live there now. Cozy moon cave. At the center of the moon. I know I can swap out Pokemon, but no. I want to see. When does the infatuation go away? They have fucking, through abuse of the system that they designed, made a fight where Pokemon can have three status effects when you're only supposed to have one status effect. Oh, well, confusion, it goes away by itself, but we removed the turn limit and made it random, it seems. So it's not really a status effect, even though it should be. I'm sorry, if sleep is a status effect, so should confusion be. Same thing with a fat infatuation. The only one should be active at a time. If it fucks with the players, like, doing stuff, like, even other... Like, status effects don't fuck with the player's ability to do things. Like, there's freeze, but freeze is stupid and rare. Because ice types are bad, and nobody has ice type moves even when they're an ice type, it seems. And the proc rate is just, like, super, super, duper low. But then... When it comes to, like, burn and poison, those just do damage over time. But then there's paralyze, which, like, oh kind of messes with the player's ability to do things. Then there's sleep, which really does get in the way of the player's ability to do things, but it's turn-limited to a degree, and your Pokemon wakes up eventually on its own. 
And then there's confusion, which gets in your way, but eventually goes away on its own. So it's just, it's very weird and stupid, and I hate it. Same thing with affection. It's just like, what does it even do? I haven't been, like, affected by it, hardy har har. So I don't know, like, what goes into it. When does it go away? Can it go away? Is it eternal for some reason? And again, would a, like, full restore get rid of it? I don't think so, because it's not a status effect. It is an effect, but it doesn't affect the status. It's weird, and I hate it. Of course you survive, you stupid hoe fish! God, I hate you. Lammy hasn't gotten to do anything because the design is stupid. And of course the stupid fish goes first all the time. Oh well, it's just very fast. Fuck off. You're all paralyzed. Fuck off. I hate it. It's stupid. It's bad design. Oh no, it's strategy. Fuck off. It's bad design. Because it's annoying. And used by the enemy. In an intentional way. Again, I just feel like when you have that many things that just fuck with the player's ability to do things, they should be statuses. Not just random things that go on in the background. It's just annoying to me. If it can mess with the player's ability to do things just that much, it should be a status. Paralysis is a status. Sleep is a status. Why is confusion and inf infatuation not statuses? What? I don't want to do this anymore. You did it to yourself. You were the one that made us sit here for five billion years. It was you! Me? Lose again? My pride will not stand for it. Here, take this thing away. For that, I want your silence that this battle never happened. I shall forget that I ever battled with you. Yes, that's what I'll do. <laughs> she didn't even have the audacity to run away like she did from us before. She just walked. But yeah, that was just a very annoying fight. Like, beforehand, when it was just like, oh, the Raichu, and then, like, the Blossom, like, that area. Not too terribly bad, but then that Melodic. Adding on, it just, it, it just bothers me so much that that battle was intentionally stacking paralysis and infatuation and confusion. And by the mere fact, granted, it seems that, like, well, no, the Blossom very well could have had Stun Spore. So, Paralysis might have been beyond just the, the diddly D Raichu. It wasn't the worst, but it was just bothersome. I don't like bothersome in my RPGs. Because it's mainly due to the fact that it just wastes time. It's like, oh, you choose thing. Oh, but thing did not happen. And then you stack layers of that. It's, it's bothersome. At least with, like, poison and fire, there's strategy to it, to a degree. But then when it came to, like, stalling, I hate stalling. Stalling is mean. So let's see, Ein? Ein indeed. Okay, this is gonna be a little bothersome probably, but let's go. Well, well. So you have come. Hand in hand like a happy couple on an aimless stroll. Well, let me inform you, this is no picnic. You will never defeat me with such a frivolous mind. Hopefully you won't be as terrible as last time. Oh, but you are a bothersome boy. And you leveled up your Pokemon. Hmm. Ponder. Confuse Rayu. Then I think take Espeon out and put Frost in. 
Also, that crowbat is fucking huge. Good, you use protect. So that means that thing's gonna use earthquake if it can, or fissure, or magnitude. Please hit yourself as justice. Hit yourself for justice, please. God damn you. And toxic. Damn it. I think that just, yeah, it's just a status of poison. It's badly poisoned. How dare they? Then I'll secret power you, then I guess we'll just serve. Hit yourself, please. Thank you. Who are you gonna use bite on frost? That is a weird ass animation for a bite, <laughs> okay? Also, those, those those teeth. Those teeth are horrific. What the fuck? You gotta get flinched. God damn you. I'm getting very annoyed by your bullshit game. Hate it. I'm beginning to hate it. Let me do shit, please. Of course you don't. Oh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna hit myself multiple times in a row like my lamb. I hate it. When I'm confused, I get all the self-hits. Meanwhile, the enemy is just like, I don't. <laughs> I'm not going to be affected by that. Which I just, I hate. I hate it. Sure, it's probably just the RNG, but it's so stupid. I hate it. It just doesn't feel fair. When I... Suffer badly. Okay, I'm just gonna maybe Aurora Beam you. That works for me, I suppose. Again, the teeth are just horrific. Because rock ground should be affected badly by ice, right? Super effective, yeah! What do you mean snapped out of your fucking confusion? That's so fucking stupid. I hate this game. So much. Could do that. Do I care to? It's just... It's so stupid. Confusion lasts forever on me. Heart is like so stupid. It aggravates me. So much. I guess I'll use Aurora Beam on you. If, see if, like, you're part flying. Maybe this should burn you alive. I don't know. Wait, it, it just annoys me. That it, that seems to be consistently happening. Mm. Of course you will. Why can't that ever fail on these guys? Why does it never fail on these guys? Very annoying. Yeah, protect itself. There's another target. I also dislike the poison mechanic there. Or just increases in damage over and over and over again. Understandable to a degree, but still annoying. I guess we'll send you out as a sacrificial lamb, bring Frost back in. Maybe. Probably shouldn't have sent you out, come to think of it. Now I'll oh wait, it's dark types, it wouldn't work. Oh no, it does? What? I thought it was dark types. And it's super effective. I'm very confused. Again, when it comes to typing, I'm terrible. And 
Ivan and Pelepa. And that killed him somehow. Neat. Again, I kind of miss the ability to swap out Pokemon after fainting other Pokemon. Kind of miss that. And we'll swap out Miss my Bianca with Lammy. We'll try to one-shot the Pelipper. Unless that Starmie probably confused Ray's Lammy and then... Oh, hey, good. Rain Dance. Will the Pelipper also try to Rain Dance? Okay, good. They both try to Rain Dance. Of which I do believe that'll be Annihilation for you. Unless that Hydro Pump one-shots for some reason. Fucking close. Why? But why, though? <laughs> and I do believe Raikou is gonna pop out next. If I was informed correctly, and good, good. We will try to capture you. Try. And that Pelipper is out, so we can focus purely on you. This time, we won't confuse Rayu as much as I really want to. Use Learn Parish Song. What's Parish Song? I know it's pretty, well, interesting. Any Pokemon hearing this song faints in three turns, and that is... If it isn't a... I assume that that means that if I use it just in this four... <laughs> Pokemon battle, everyone would die. Which could be an interesting thing, maybe. Hmm. Any Pokemon hearing this song faints in three turns. And then I could probably swap out my Pokemon, maybe. I wonder if I use Perish Song if the enemy trainers would then be smart and swap out their Pokemon. Overall, that's too much strategy. It's probably a super duper broken. But I am a fool, so we shall not. Alright. Uh, try to Thunder Wave. Except you're probably gonna nuke my goddamn Lammy, because you're a bitch. Okay, good. You went for the tank instead. Thank you. Probably because the AI was like, oh, that's electric type. Let's not use electric power on electric type. Thunder Wave. Hmm. Let me quickly look at the power of certain moves. By to 60, 70, 60. So I guess we could try. Bite. And I will throw one timer ball. We've been here for a while, I think. Not as long as with Venus, but we shall try. But I forgot. Oh, yeah, you also have your terrible catch rate. One. Arg. Pain. Oh, pain and misery. Please don't get a crit. This game is just an asshole. Why is it just an asshole? I'm not going to reload a save. I'm not going to go get Raikou. I don't care. It's just bothersome. Gah! He has improved since our last meeting? But no, that's just, that's just bullshit game. You throw all that inane like, just shenanigans at me with these admins. And then you're like, oh yeah, and then we're gonna make it a bitch to catch this legendary Pokemon, haha. <laughs> nah, eh, fuck off, game. That's a bad design to me. It should be e- Like, once you get there, past all that, they're half health. 
It's like, just annoying. Just very annoying, and I hate it. But considering that Raikou had its, like, stupid catch rate from Gold and Silver slapped on top of all that, I can only assume I wouldn't have gotten it anyways. It probably would have started using Shadow Rush to kill itself purely to spite me. Gah. It is a shame that you oppose us, Neon. Here, use this. Go on, open the door with it. And the yellow ID badge. <laughs> what awaits beyond the door? Why, you should see with your own eyes. Yeah, it's just it's very annoying. Oh boy. PDA. Woom, doth be. Ah, ear gun. Dear Neon, this is ear gun of egg. egg oh, ear gun. Yeah, the. For a moment, I thought it was the the mayor guy, but that was like a. He wouldn't have used his actual name. <laughs> I'm a fool. It's the Agate Village grandfather. Dear Neon, this is ear gun of Agate Village. I just wanted to let you know this is my first electronic email. I'm not familiar with high-tech things, so I have only learned how to type in words. Incidentally, if you are ever in... And that's it. I don't know how to scroll. It doesn't seem to be able to scroll. Uh, that's it, then. Greetings. Nothing else. Meaningless. Okay? Oh, Grandpa. The email's cut off before he finally gets to the point. What should we do, Neon? Should we go back to Agate Village, or should we keep going? Might as well go back to Agate Village. I doubt the game will actually make that be a point. Like... I don't know, maybe it'll be like, oh, you didn't get a legendary beast? Uh, how about we uh, actually give it to you? Like, actually, that would have been cooler. If you beat them, then you got, like, the Shadow Legendaries. Because it's already stressful enough to try and get the Shadow Pokemon you do want. You add on, it's a Legendary, it's cool. Should have just been a Victory Reward. But then they just decided, Ah, oh, it has to be the Shadow. The Shadow Capture Method. And it just became annoying. Again, I could re re reload, but no, I don't care. I don't care, it's late in the game. I don't think we have much longer in the game to go. I just, I don't care. It's just very annoying and I dislike it. Dislike it a lot. But let's go see what's going on in Agate Village as it's burning to the ground. Is everyone dead? Well, ear gun, what be? Nothing on the news. Ah, Rui, and Neon, it's good to see you back. I sent you an email. I'm quite proud of myself for that. We got it, but it was cut off before we got to anything worthwhile, Grandpa. Oh, is that so? That's odd. Well, since you're here, it would just be as well to tell you in person. <laughs> I have a little something I'd like Neon to have. Please take this. Is it the third flute? Oh, it's the Master Ball! You fucker. I would have used that on him. Because, like, even if it is... Like, I would have cared to get Raikou more than, like, any potential Shadow, Groudon, or Kyogre. Not really my favorite legendaries. I prefer the legendary beasts. Now... Neon, Rui, it's time for you to go. Bring down the criminal syndicate threatening world peace. But yeah, I think that's my main gripe with the... Also a minor gripe is that Raikou didn't level up, it seemed. Raikou stayed at a low level. Which is just extra mean, because it's already difficult to capture legendary Pokemon. Because you have to whittle away at their health. Whittle away, whittle away, whittle away at their health. So, you're gonna throw a legendary Pokemon at the player. With like, yes it is a cool capture system, 
but the moment that you don't get the Pokemon you, like, really, really would like to have, because the capture system got in the way, the capture system is not, like, is going to be favored far less after that. So in my opinion, I think it would have been cooler if the Shadow Pokemon were bosses, like, not the Shadow Pokemon overall, but, like, the Shadow Legendaries were bosses in their own right. That way you could see them in the overworld and be like, oh, that's a legendary, prepare and go for them whenever you wanted. So that way you could focus on just capturing the legendary. Rather than get all confuzzled by worrying about taking down the boss man as well. I do like the effect, putting in the... Like the effect that after you put in the ID card on the Pokeball wall it was very nice. It's aesthetically pleasing. But like another reason why I kind of dislike the fact that the Shadow Legendaries aren't just given to you after you beat the admin people is because you can't save wherever you want. If I could save at any point, right in front of, like, the bosses. I mean, yes, I'm using an emulator, so therefore I could save state if I wanted. But it's like the initial game design of the, this GameCube game is just frustrating in that aspect. Not the most terrible, but it just, like, does wiggle under my brain. Well, stop right there. I can't very well let you go any farther. But all the admins said that I should. Diog. Yeah, just overall, very disappointing. Especially because Ayn felt like he had really high-level Pokemon until the Legendary. So that just annoys me. Annoys me greatly. Bothers me just much, yes. At least I get to listen to cool, nice music. To cool down my nerves. And you flinched, because you are a bench. And we shall use Swift to annihilate that one weak one and do damage to the Ariados. No idea how to pr properly say it. And hopefully that'll allow... Umbreon to annihilate the Ariados. Heracross. Why is this Heracross more powerful than Raikou? And too bad for you, I don't care about capturing you. I think it's kind of cute. The Ariados, when it gets fainted, like stamps its foot on the ground, like in anger, and then slips. And we'll just uh, annihilate you, I guess. Weird. I could have sworn that Bug type was strong against Psychic, or is it one of those weird? They're powerful against each other. I don't know. Nobody said a word about you being this tough! How would you not know, you lunatic? And I'm gonna go heal up and save again. I think that's a little annoying, in my opinion. <laughs> that was a little annoying. We're gonna throw a peon at ya! <laughs> Maybe just do a bit of damage, so you'll be like, Do I go back to the heal station that has a bunch of loading screens, so I can top off before we go into the presumably gauntlet that's going to be ahead. But yeah, just overall I think the cool, the, the system, this game has cool systems. It has very cool systems and found a very interesting way of still allowing you to capture Pokemon while like not having wild Pokemon to fight. But I do think that it could have used a few tweakings to make the system less aggravating and more fruitful and fun. 
Although I just realized that the criminal gang that we were part of just has not been in the game at all since the start. Well, what next? This goes to the big old tower, right? No, it's a big old dome. Another email. Shadow Pokemon list. Neon, I did it! I analyzed the data ROM and managed to extract a partial list of Shadow Pokemon. For the time being, I've identified 29 Shadow Pokemon. There appear to be more, so I'll send them to you when I, uh, send updates when I find them. Too bad that is meaningless to me. Let me guess, this guy wants to fight. Fanfare, please, congratulations! You are the thousandth guest to enter Real Game Tower since its opening! I don't believe you. Yeah, like as if. We just opened today, so that's not likely. <laughs> he even called himself out. Clest. This is an interesting battle arena. Dark Grass type. And Guavla. I guess Secret Power Nuzleaf, and then Psychic the Graveler. Damn you. I also kind of dislike Protect, because it, it also feels like a turn waste move. And what is Fake Out? Like a guaranteed flinch. But congratulations, you saved me from using my Psychic. Secret Power again, Psychic again. I feel like that should be illegal. Just why? Goodbye, Nosleaf. What is that Graveler waiting for to explode? Oh hey, Hariyama, you're gonna get fucking nuked. I think, maybe. Well, I guess... I guess I'll confuse Ray the Graveler just because it's annoying me. Let's see, is it a guaranteed flinch? No, it does not seem to be. Weird. Like, what is even the power of Fake Out then? Maybe it has a high flinch rate compared to Bite and stuff. So it's like a gamble. Good job, Bianca. Oh no, it did flinch in the end. How dare you. Guess we'll secret power you and, uh, I guess psychic you. Just get one of these guys out of the way. Why are you all using fake out? So it does seem to be a guaranteed flinch move, which is annoying. Quit wasting my time, game. I hate it when games go, we take control away. And I dislike it when games also go, ah, but it's part of the strategy. Our strategy is to annoy you to death. Now will you please die, Lombre? Get critical, idiot. What you gotta say, Mr. Thousandth Visitor? Sorry! You don't need to get so steamed over my white little white lie! <laughs> I bet I made you happy when I said you were the thousandth guest. Isn't that right? Nah, I knew it was a lie from the start. You opened today. And of course, we're gonna go all the way back, just in case. Who knows, maybe they'll have another health station right after I beat that guy. But I don't trust this game. This game is evil sometimes, so we shan't. So we shall not. After with house, this game has torn away my heart when it comes to Raikou. I no longer trust it.
But I wonder who even those other guys are. Like, there are Cypher agents all over the place. I had to beat the big ol' big ol's to get in. Like, is the bandana guy just a normal dude? No, because he's claimed to be, like, a representative of this place. But who knows? Maybe it's just a jokester. Then again, look to all the weirdos that exist within the insane asylum that is Mirror B's cave. Some of them seem to just be normal trainers hanging out with a criminal organization, so I don't know. Maybe everyone's crazy. Remember to drink your tea. Welcome to the just completed real Gam Tower. Well, how about a battle to an uh, event to as an event to commemorate the opening? Hunter Al Ally? Oh, hey, it's a Mawile! I like Mawile. I don't think I've ever used a Mawile as a party member, but I like Mawile. And we shall blast the Matang, because we can. Every single time I, like... Ah, dang it. Not very effective, how dare. I think the Mawa is also steel type, so this will be kind of a bothersome one. But you flinched. Haha! -ha! I still don't quite understand why. Psychic does poorly against steel types. Really, the only thing I can think of is Psychic was so good in the first generation that they're like, oh no, we have to make it so Psychic is weak to something in the second generation, and then it just carried over and carried over into Nightmare World. I don't even know why I'm using Confuse Ray. It's not going to work out for me. The game's mean. Watch, well, it's not going to hit itself. See? <laughs> I should just not use Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is just bad. All right, we'll try to take down the layer on. So yeah, note to self, unless absolutely desperate, don't bother with Confuse Ray. It's meaningless. It's worthless as a tactic. It only works against the player. And there might be somebody who's like, no, it, it actually works fine. It's just the RNG. It's just like, well, if it feels bad to use, why should I use it? <laughs> Are you going to hit yourself? No, of course not. The game's just embracing it at this point. Just embracing the absolute shenaniganery of it all. Will he flinch? Or will he just power through? Never mind, he, he'll die. Why? Why does Dark Type Bite not. Like, is it because it fainted it didn't say not effective? Or am I just going insane? Is the game actually saying that Dark Type Bite cuts through steel? I'm. I don't. Again, could just be that it fainted so it didn't bother with the not very effective, but still, makes me feel weird. Well, I was supposed to win! What kind of receptionist are you? Since you bothered to come, you may as well enjoy yourselves. <laughs> so there's an elevator, and we'll fight you. And two doors. They told me this place will be attracting guests from all over the world. I can demonstrate my battling to all sorts of influential people. I can become famous worldwide. You're lucky. Before anyone, I'll show you how skilled I am at battling. Looper! What is with the names in this game? Well, at least battle her. Then we'll go heal up, talk to the guy in front of the elevator, and then... Well, or maybe we should check out the rooms. The elevator seems important. And we'll psychic the quillfish, because frick off and die. 
Stupid, you stupid fish. To the hell zone you go. And who do you throw out? Seedra. Maybe the artillery will flinch. Become calamari. Haha, get flinched, idiot. Get flinched and die. Blows up seahorse with mind. Why is there a level 39 Pokemon at the end of the game? Not that I'm super complaining, it's just kind of weird. It's just kind of weird that the game throws that out here this late into the game. Especially considering, like, I don't know, it's just like, it's weird that the admins had such high level Pokemon. But then, like, just makes the leveling of Raikou, or lack thereof, all the more annoying. I don't think she got to do a single thing to me. That is hilarious. And a level up for Bianca. Oh, you dashed my dream of fame! What, did you need those Pokémon to do this, the performance? What I'll do, I'll hone my skills and position myself as a charismatic trainer! That could work. I mean... You could, like, uh, hone your skills and, like... <laughs> One thing I don't, I don't quite understand is, when you go to summary, and you look at the summary of moves, it tells you, like, the performance ability of moves. Like, in, uh, third generation, uh, what are they called? Performances? The ribbon ones. You go, you perform, you get ribbons, those little, that little minigame thing. I don't think I ever did it all that much, but May in the Pokemon anime was uh, into that rather than Pokemon gym battling. I wonder if that would be an interesting idea for like a Pokemon game. Instead of like Pokemon gym battling and you, they make like a whole system for the performance side of things. Make it more in depth. I think, and of course like adopt the I think the anime's way of doing things where it's like performance and then at some point battle, but the battle has to be fantastical. Or maybe that is a part of the thing already and they base the anime off that. Or like those parts of the anime off that. Again, I didn't really do it those all that much. But I just, I don't remember them being in depth. Well... I guess we could talk to this guy. Shh, Leon, it's me, Silva! I snuck in here under disguise. I surprised you, huh? That's not important, though. The word is that Cypher's boss is waiting for the both of you at the top of the tower. And he's supposed to have the ultimate shadow Pokemon. Neon, Rui, good luck and please be careful, always. Alright, that's the obvious thing, but I want to go through doors. Interesting. The builder of the towers plans to raise big money by attracting the world's richer folks. But you need to bait. But you need bait to get the attention of people like that. Something big and exciting. If you guessed it, Shadow Pokemon Battles! So this might just be the end. Oh, Ninetales! It's been a while since we've even seen Vulpix. Neat. Now, who do I think is more dangerous? I think I'll just nuke down the Nine Tails and maybe attack the Pokemon underneath if it lives. Or, like, dies, I mean. But the bite should take you out. I'm a... Well, that's horrifying. Oh, crap, it's this move. Never mind, it didn't do that much. That move, uh, if I remember correctly, it was horrifying back in Emerald. In which, I forget her name, she just had... All her Pokemon had overheat, a TM move. The TM move that you get at the end, and she just had it on all her Pokemon, and it was utterly annihilating me, and I hated it. Let's see. I 
guess we'll bite the Magneton and Psychic the Swellow. So maybe the Swellow won't get a move in. Haha, <laughs> critical hit. Goodbye. Another reason why I don't use, like, preparation moves. Because that happens. Or confusion. I can't believe he sent out the Hunchback of Notre Dame. Not very effective. So yeah, I don't understand why it feels like that ma that, that Matang just got nuked by my Dilidia. Again, it could have just been that it fainted so it didn't bother to show the wasn't very effective. I don't know. But I also find... <laughs> I just hit me that yet another evil organization is using gambling. That amuses me. Flinch again. Flinch again. Good. When I get to the big bad, he's not going to flinch once, is he? <laughs> That's just how it goes. I so dislike steel types. They are too immune to damage. Shit, this isn't like me to lose. You're in a gambling hall. You idiot. Do you get it now? Win or lose, battles attract people. So you're Neon, ex-member of Team Snagum. <laughs> I've been hoping that I get a shot at battling you. Let's see this high-level battling that everyone's been talking about. Kevil. What is with these names? Like, maybe it has a basis in a real name? Oh, hey, it's a Don fan. They find it amusing that, like, one of the only fampies I can remember is, like, level 38 in this game. Two levels later, Dom fan. We've come so far, haven't we? I think I'm going to uh, nuke this Dom fan from orbit. Good job. Bye-bye, Dom fan. No rollout for you. Oh, hey, it's a quick side. And a critical hit. That amuses me greatly. Not Rock Tomb. That hits everyone, I think. No? What? That was such an underwhelming animation. What? <laughs> that was such an underwhelming animation, okay. Sure. And goodbye, Sand Slash. And a level up for Umbreon. Huzzah! I think this guy got like one move off. And I just annihilated him. Poor sucker. And a level up for Bianca. Turf down! What does that even mean? Does that mean that he's no longer a trans-exclusionary radical feminist? He's just all out of that? You're on the other side, but I still have to hand it to you. Going to take the item and I guess level up father a bit. I think he's decent enough with experience. And then we'll I guess give the spell tag back, even though well, I think you only have one one diddly do move. Welcome, it's been a while, hasn't it? You don't recall who I am? It's me. We met a quite a while ago in Fennec City. Oh, my name is Bluno! You may not remember me, but don't worry, I haven't forgotten you. You snagged my crocknaw back then. Yeah, you remember now. Well, pal, today's the day. It's payback time! I don't even have my cro the croc no I took from you. Although part of me wonders if Suicune is just worse than the croc no. Well, I know which one I'm going to nuke from orbit first. Wait a minute. The Grumpig is psychic, isn't it? This might be a double knockout. Well, let's see. 
Will this be a double knockout? Blast away the muck. I'm kind of annoyed that this has a checkered styled ceiling. I don't know why. It bothers me. No. Nah. So you have a high special defense. Or like just defense. I don't know again if it's like, <laughs> I have no idea what a normal attack, special attack, I don't know. Goodbye, Grumpig. Remember to drink your tea. It looks like it had a stroke. Honestly, kind of horrifying. Defeated Bluno. Blast it! I can't lose again! Well, you just did. You idiot. You fool. And he's just gone. That amuses me. That makes me wonder if, like, back in that city, Finac City, when the, those, like, because they were, like, color-coordinated guys following Mirror B out of the house of the mayor, I believe, and then they blocked off the exits to the entirety of Finac City so he wouldn't leave. I wonder if that's basically a starter choice, quote-unquote, shadow Pokemon starter choice. Like, one would have Krokna, one would have Quill Lava, and stuff like that. One would have Bayleaf, maybe. I think that would be interesting. I do kind of also like that Silva has kind of floated around. Constantly being utterly annihilated by anyone he comes across, but still being helpful. Do, 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 do. But I do wonder what the ultimate shadow Pokemon is. It's obviously not Shadow Lugia, because that's the sequel game. I don't think it's Shadow Mewtwo, because Shadow Mewtwo was a creation for Pokemon Tournament, I believe. But I don't think there's any other, like... Then again, Shadow Pokemon in this game is just normal Pokemon that is exudes aura. Well, I gave you a good jolt, eh? <laughs> I've been waiting by that door for you to come on. Been waiting a long time. Next, I'll shock you even more of my Pokemon battle. Gibbern. Remove the G, and he's a character from Legend of... League of Legends. My brain's just like, Legend, that's not how it begins. But a fool that I am. Now, who scares me more? I think the Wigglytuff scares me more. We shall annihilate you. And if you manage to die, then we'll annihilate your friend, too. Oh, you're a bitch. <laughs> How dare you survive with one HP? How dare you target me with your silly flipper feet and your seizuring on the floor flopping around like a fish? Hyper voice. Does it instill hyper mode? Of course not. It's a normal move. I'm going to assume it attacks everyone. But it doesn't do much damage. Probably because it's... No, it's not terrible level. Weird. Blast him! To the moon! And you only had two Pokemon. Why are you even here, big man? Ah, that's a shocker! You're like, outrageously tough! Have you not heard of me? You were waiting for me specifically, didn't you say? Do you know how hard it is to just wait and wait and wait without moving? Try imagining it. Now think about it, eh? I doubt very much that you could keep it up for long. <laughs> You're a weirdo. Are you here to dine? Sure. 
Sorry to disappoint you, we're not ready to serve anyone yet. Let me make it up for you. I'll serve up a full course menu of a Pokemon battle. If you have a full six team, that would actually be interesting. Cradley and Noctowl. I think both of these motherfuckers are kind of annoying to fight. Or the last Noctowl I fought was kind of a tank. And the Lily, the unevolved, uh, that one, a bit bothersome. Hmm. We'll try and blast away at that Noctowl. No tanky birds in here. Devour its soul. Drag it to hell! Did that kid's Noctowl just have absurd defense or what? Oh, you're horrifying. I think you're poison type. Stockpile? Stockpiled one. One of what? I will uh, psychic you because I do believe you're part poison type and I want you gone! Goodbye! And now that Cradley is probably going to stockpile to two. Chimico! I think you're also psychic. I say also as if we've. <laughs> she's had a psychic before. What'll that do? Not all that much, honestly. And, uh, destroy you, and destroy you. Blow up plant with mine. Good job. Now let's see how Chimico fares. I also have to remember how I did Naskauer's voice. Ah, you survived! Good job! Ah, crap. Hypnosis, and then you miss. Would that even work against... Because he's Dark-type. Get blasted with the power of love. <laughs> and then just fell to the ground top-heavy. The doorknob on its head. It's too heavy. The weight of its sins. Thanks for dinner. But there wasn't any. That's a nonsensical thing to say. That was too heavy for some light exercise before a meal. And nobody. Interesting. And of course, now we will go back, heal, save, and then go up and, I guess, see Na Naskauer. For... I could have... I could have... Just expected, like, Ein to have been the final boss of this area, and then Naskauer was off doing an evil plan elsewhere. I don't even fully understand their Shadow Pokemon plan. Because I could kind of understand some of it, where they're trying to get Shadow Pokemon out there to test run the Shadow Pokemon process, make them more powerful, less likely to be freed. But... Obviously, we have a Master Ball, so at least that's one thing. When Naskauer throws a Legendary Shadow Pokemon at us, at least I assume, like, what is it gonna be? A Shadow Pikachu? What else? Like, what in the world could it be, actually? Again, probably Groudon or Kyogre, or maybe Groudon and Kyogre. Did I save? I think I saved. Either way, it probably doesn't matter. But yeah, because he has the ultimate shadow Pokemon, which could be... I just want to make sure that I actually healed up my Pokemon. Well, up we go. Let's see how it is. I do like this ornate elevator. It's kind of cool. It looks like a pill, but it still kind of looks cool. Hey oh, hello, Naskauer. Ah, you finally reached me. 
I must say that I am impressed. Neon and Rui, I welcome you to the real Gan Tower. My name is Naskour, do you remember? The time that we met in Fenac City. I did have the feeling that I would one day face you in battle, but I never imagined that you would be the one to seek me out here. Very soon we will be ready to greet your arrival in style. I will go ahead and wait for you. Don't keep me waiting too long. And, uh, another one. That's a nice Entei statue. Neon, quick, we have to chase him! I want to explore, though. There's probably going to be minions about. Alright, hey, at least this is here. Okay, that's it, then. My Pokemon are all nursed back to perfect health and readiness. Now we can go full tilt against you in battle! I was expecting that. Rugen. Shellgon and Vigoroth. At least this allows me to heal up and uh, save up here so I don't have to backtrack as much. I guess I'll secret power you and then blast your Vigoroth. Why are you up here if just two Pokemon? Goodbye, little boy. You're dead now. And now we're left with just that shell monster. Use secret power, I guess. The secret power that is inside you. Did hardly anything. But is now paralyzed for some reason. But he still used headbutt. Too bad you can't make us... I guess, technically, that could be considered a headbutt. Technically. And then Psychic, I guess. I could have sworn that that... I could have sworn that I used Psychic moves against a Shell Gun before and they didn't do much. But I forget. My memory's terrible. Darn it, I don't like you! Now I have to heal my Pokemon up again! And they, he just turned to ash. We killed him. But I just had the thought. Wouldn't it be amusing if there was like a Pokemon like ROM hack? Where it's like, oh, you think it's normal? But then the more you play it, like randomly Pokemon typings won't be what you thought they were. You'll be like, oh, I'm running into like a Charizard. I will use Hydro Pump against it. But then it's like, that's not very effective just to screw with you. But then maybe it would start out less obvious with other Pokemon that people might forget the typings of. Or with typings that people forget the overall effect of. Interesting, there's two elevators. I do like the... These three statues. Makes it hurt all the more that I don't have Raikou because the game's mean to me. I guess that's the exit. Guess we have to chase after you. Ah, he's gone? What should we do, Neon? Why no? How about over the other way? Can we take the other elevator? Does it miraculously spawn? Oh, it's no good. We can't take this elevator either. And oh, hey, <laughs> Team Snagum boss. <laughs> Long time no see, eh, Neon? You're not gonna break my heart and tell me you've forgotten my face, are you now? That face? It can't be! Team Snagum? But why here? Even if you don't want to fully believe it, you're absolutely right, little lady. I'm Gonzap, the team. The team? The boss of Team Snagum. Gonzap is such a weird name. And don't you forget it. Did you ask what I'm doing here? Yes, isn't this Cypher's headquarters? Team Snagum shouldn't have anything to do with this. <laughs> well, surprise, surprise. We may have a lot to do with this, Missy. We were just thieves before we got hold of the snag machines. And where did we get them? From Scyther. What they wanted was this. Go snag superior grade Pokemon from trainers everywhere. What? 
So this is all one big plot hatched by Cypher? That's what I'm saying. Aren't you the brainy one, missy? Master Nascower's waiting for you upstairs. But you've got me to deal with first. We've got a little score to settle here. It's time you paid up for wrecking our hideout and wiping out Team Snagum. Don't get any ideas about beating me. <laughs> I will say, a little disappointing that it's just a part of the thing. It would have been more am amusing if, like, he came in and was, like, taking over the scheme. Like, Nascour gets defeated, then Int runs in, gone zap with his Snagum team, and they snag a bunch of shadow Pokemon from Cypher to use as their own. I think that would be cool. But nope, it's just... He's a part of it. And that's it. And your Hariyama's dead. Who are you gonna throw out next, little man? Little dude? Mustache? Crawdont. It's standing on two legs like a freak. Haha, <laughs> you flinched. Haha, <laughs> idiot. Oh, wait, you're part dark type, aren't you? I'm going to secret power you instead. And then we'll blast the pincer because I think it's weak. Maybe. Well, either way, it dies. That, those teeth are just horrifying. Flippity floppiting like that. Should be illegal. Shift tree! Well, that's not good. Dark, like, uh, dark type and grass type. Sludge bomb. Bleh. Oh, crap. That did a lot of damage. Hmm. I guess I'll keep mm, smacking down you. I guess we can try and turn the shift tree. Maybe should have tried to return the Crawdont. Yeah, you're a tank. Shadow Ball! And my Espeon's down for the count. Because you're a mean little bitch. I'll bring in Lammy to try and nuke down the Crawdont, because I think the Shift Tree shouldn't be too terrible to blast. Unless you decide to go first. Alright, so we'll bite you, even though it's probably not going to be all that effective. Probably should have used Secret Power. Because I think the sh Diddly D, the Crawdon's just tanky. Please go before the Crawdon. Thank you. Oh, it curled up on itself. It's kind of sad. Who are you going to send out next? Skarmory! Oh, I wanna. Oh, I wanna. Oh, god damn you. Well, at the same time, I don't really care all that much. I don't care all that much. All right, so I'm going to Hyper Potion you. I'm going to blast that Skarmory out of the sky. Because I don't care about capturing new Shadow Pokemon this late into the game. If it lives enough, I will. But I don't think it will because I, it's Steel Flying. This is going to annihilate it. And this guy's just using Shadow Ball over and over and over again. Let's see, does this one-shot this guy? It does! Goodbye! Cool design. I don't really care to use you. My team's kind of set. I'm sure, though, the whole thing about this game is, oh, we have to save uh, the Shadow Pokemon! Yeah, it's uh, The novelty is kind of worn off. And actually, capturing Shadow Pokemon's kind of a pain. 
Now I am the one that lives with one HP. I am the one, the one, I forget that song. And now you survive with one HP too. We're the one HP band. I guess I'll blast you thunder in case it comes to that. And then I beat you, big man, with mustache and eyebrows. How do you even get eyebrows like that? You have grown a lot better, Neon. I already forgot his voice. What do you say, Neon? Why don't you and me team up again? Just like old times. You, me, and the snag machine. We can do whatever we please. The world will be ours, hey? No. Hmm, I figured you'd say that. But that doesn't matter anymore. There's no going back for you now. Get going. I gotta go heal. Would be amusing if you go to heal. He's like, while you were gone, I also healed. Fight me again. So yeah, kind of disappointing that the twist of Team Snagum is just... They were part of Cypher all along, actually. Which, in a way, kind of diminishes the player character a bit. Because we don't even know the player character's motivations. I mean, presumably, the motivation was he kind of knew about the Shadow Pokemon stuff. But I don't know. Because we stole- we blew up the big Snagga machine and uh, stole the, the portable one. So I don't know. Don't tell me this is like... Oh, is it going to be like an actual Coliseum? I was worried that we'd have to walk around a lot. Look at those sprites of <laughs> the ab like the, the 3D models of this game. How did they get so many people here? Well, let's see what the... What kept you, Neon? I worried that perhaps Gonzap had beaten you. The time has come for you to pay off some debts. We'll have you battle as payment towards the huge losses you inflicted on us. I expect to see spectacular battling out of you. After all, you're here to entertain! <laughs> So we're just going to be battling random people. Okay, interesting. A big crowd like this, it is a little intimidating. I don't want to be embarrassed here, so I'll battle to win. So, it, oh wait, but I think this actually heals Pokemon between battles. It is a Coliseum, and uh, your Pokemon heal between Coliseum battles. Oh no! Not a milk tank! But hey, it's a Zangoose! We haven't seen Zangoose in this game so far. At least the first time, that's neat. We've seen Zviper like two or three times, but not Zangoose. Yeah, I don't I don't really care. If it, if it survives, it survives. But if it dies, it dies. If you survive this, I will try to capture you. But if you don't survive, that's on you. Yeah, because the novelty of capturing Shadow Pokemon has slightly gone down. How dare you do so much damage. That was weird. My brain was focusing on the, uh, like, attack menu, and so when it went dark, I was just like... Oh, no, no. Freaked my brain out there for a moment. Hmm. Actually... We will throw an Ultra Ball at you, just in case. And then we'll Psychic the Zangoose. Considering we should heal between battles since this is a Colosseum battle. That's just an annoying game. Goodbye, Zangus. That's kind of sad.
Porygon 2. Neat. Sure, keep uh, keep doing that. I do kind of like that Porygon 2's animations are like uh, the bird on the desk thing. We shall try again, even though I doubt it'll work. Because the catch rate seems super low for some reason. One wobble. I think I'll just nuke you, because this isn't worth it. That's the thing with the Shadow Pokemon thing. It, like, it's a cool gimmick. But that's all that it kind of is at this point. Once you get it further into the game, it... Like... It, it, it is a cool thing. But it replacing normal wild Pokemon is kind of lame when catching some Pokemon can be annoying. Because it seems that they've decided to go on the... Gone the... Have decided to go the... We're going to make capturing Pokemon annoying, actually, route. Which is... Just not good. It's not good. Because it's just like, at the very least, the first throw against a Pokemon that's that low should be two wobbles. Maybe even three. But no, it's like one wobble twice. So I just like, kind of don't like it. If you survive once more, nope. If you had, I would give you one more ball, but two balls that, is, that are stuck, like two ultra balls. The biggest non-gimmick, non-limited Pokeball I can get, and it wobbles only once, twice in a row? No. No, you don't. I refuse. What? That wasn't supposed to happen? Again, everybody just has mental breakdowns when I win. Hopefully my Pokemon do get healed since this is meant to kind of be a Colosseum battle. Who's next? Just a dude. My turn next. That's all he has to say. Ryder Dallin. Dallin! Absol and Mightyena. I forget what typing Absol is. I think it might be dark. And they don't fucking heal my Pokemon mid diddly? That's bullshit. Okay, I might try to capture you. Alright, we'll blast you and but yeah, that I don't think I like this then. You're gonna emulate the fucking Coliseum but not have the rules? How dare you? That just lessens the fun immensely, I gotta say. Oh great, you're gonna be one of those people. You're gonna buff out the Pokemon I wanna catch, so you're gonna be doing major damage against me. I should probably just, like, I'm not really going to do, like, the, like, the likelihood of me actually doing the side content isn't really all that good, so I probably shouldn't. I forget. Let's try it. Give it a shot. That's what I figured, but I wanted to give it a shot because typings are weird. So yeah, we might just end up blasting the Absol. Because the game is being annoying with its mechanics. Oh, do you want to capture this Pokemon? We're going to make it a pain in the ass to capture this Pokemon. Ooh, isn't this fun? I don't like that. Because it's already, we have to take care of two other Pokemon to do this efficiently. And what do they do? They're like, hey... Why don't we make it so that the Pokemon you want to catch 
also gets buffed super duper muchly, yes? So the Pokemon you want to capture is doing lots of damage. It's like, on top of the fact that they don't heal you, it's kind of making it not fun to deal with, game. You're kind of losing me here with your mechanic. Like, if it was actually a Colosseum battle, and they healed you between fights, be perfectly fine. It's that one-two punch of them not doing that. And doing that, that make it very annoying, game. Oh, so annoying. And I'm gonna be running low on my resources. Because I thought that the game wouldn't be mean like this. But mean that is. And he used Earthquake. Which means that the Absol's gonna die too. So the game's being extra dickish here. So even if you wanted to get that Pokemon, they do major damage to that Pokemon that you might want to be capturing. Why couldn't they just, like, be nice with the design of the system? Like, sure, you want to make the Shadow Pokemon fighting you a threat, but, like... Oh, wait, that's... <laughs> I wonder what typing Sharkpedo is. Because it's water, but it's using Earthquake, which is kind of annoying. Like, at the very least, it would be nice if I could manage my inventory between fights. Why does it go first? God damn you, game. Oh boy, I sure do like not being able to have fun. Because the game just keeps doing annoying things. Sure, it's just a speed stat, but it's just it's kind of aggravating, game. It's kind of aggravating. Because you're just layering things on top that I don't like. And then the normal gameplay is also screwing me over. It's just kind of annoying to deal with all at once. You want to capture a cool Pokemon? Well, no, you can't really because of the design... Like, there's no real point to that, because the game has basically taught me that ice is terrible against water, even though it really should be good against water, because this game is stupid. But yeah, it's just like, there should be more. Just it's like some kind of give to the player. Like, again, like, between fights, I can manage my inventory, heal up, and revive. So I use resources, but I still get to reset. I'd heard about you, but I, but you were much more than I expected. And again, the fact that like, oh, Shadow Pokemon, then we're going to buff the Shadow Pokemon, and then the Shadow Pokemon is going to get nuked by its friend anyway, it's kind of annoying. So it's just kind of losing me here. You must be Neon. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Don't you think it's a great honor to battle on this fabulous stage? I'm going to beat you and earn my promotion to an admin. Yeah, it's basically a worse fi like uh uh what's the blah blah blah? What's the blah 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 that I'm thinking about? Would also be nice if I could choose the Pokemon I want to throw out to a degree. Like, again, I'm not going to bother going for any Shadow Pokemon. It's just not worth it. And again, I'm using up all my... They're just very losing me here at the end. It feels like, when it comes to the gameplay. Because they've decided to do annoying, weird things with the gameplay. They're like, oh, we have to add challenge. So it's going to become annoying and not fun. It's like, I don't like that when games do that. It should have just been 
normal Colosseum. Heal between battles. Or again, at least let me do the healing with my own items. That would be nice. But no, we have to uh, be annoying. And like, it also is doing the kind of annoying thing because not really expecting not being able to go and uh, like heal or gather items before this. Again, because I figured if it was going to be a normal, co like a Coliseum, it would be a normal Coliseum. Instead, no, nah, it's stupid. We have to add difficulty Coliseum. So it's kind of taken me out of the game. Like, I don't know. Maybe have Silva tell the player, hey, be careful. They're going to have a rigged Coliseum against you. You should stack up on heat, like grab potions and stuff, like something, anything. Inform the player on some level to the shenanigans you're going to commit against them, I guess. Because, again, they're doing this on top of throwing shadow Pokemon you might want. So it's just... I don't like it. I don't like the design of the gameplay in this segment. Just kind of brings down the mood. Get destroyed, you idiot. Because I think that's the issue where I do like the Shadow Pokemon difficulty mechanic where like, oh, you want to keep the Shadow Pokemon alive so you can catch them, so you might take more damage. Is like, that's good in normal gameplay. At this point, in this kind of setting, it's not. It's not nice. Not fun to deal with. It's no good. I might be fired. It just really sticks in the sticks in the way. Really sticks in the way. Especially because this is just an ungodly long fucking thing. This should be Nascour. I'm sorry. There's too many fights. Okay, good. I'm the last battler. I'll show you exactly why I was chosen to anchor our squad. Peon stun. Yeah, just... Game is losing me. It's losing me. Sterilize ever so slightly, it's losing me. Because it, it's becoming a pile-up of the mechanics and difficulty and just running into each other, making it aggravating rather than fun. And I just like, it's becoming disappointing. We shall try to nuke this Tropius. Because, again, I, I don't care about you anymore. Your mechanic is no longer fun. It is not worth capturing a Pokemon that I'm not going to use. Oh, fuck off. Man, it's just... Because again, I like the Shadow Pokemon capture mechanic, but they're just utilizing it in a bad way here, it feels like. They're trying to leverage it for too much difficulty in this section it would be more it would be more acceptable if like again it was a normal coliseum where it healed so if you healed between fighters like fine then i could dedicate more focus to trying to capture the shadow pokemon well ain't you a bitch Where it's just, just multiple things bothering me at this segment. I'll try Swift to take them both out, and then use Antidote on the next turn. Damn you! Hey, 
And not very effective. Sadness. Next turn I might... Mm, I think you'll survive, so what we'll do is... Oh, never mind, you'll die. Which works badly for me, because that's the end of the turn, and now... They're gonna throw out the next one, and it'll get a turn immediately. Vile plume. Okay, never mind. This actually works out decently. We shall antidote. Since we have a few antidotes. And then you can psychic the vile plume. Booyah. And then it just fucking deflates. And twitches. Horrifying. And then a cack turn. Alright, I think I'll swap you out for father. And then you will swift. Knock out the Tropius. I mean, I guess I could have tried to throw a ball, but then it might have lived and broken out because the catch rate's being bullshit at this segment, it feels like. So I don't want to bother with it. Which is kind of the problem. Each Shadow Pokemon is unique. So by making it a bother to capture the shadow Pokemon, you kind of mess up the point to a degree. At least you're the last battler, so hopefully the game will let me go back down. Hopefully we'll be able to fight him or beat him. Then the game will let me go back to wherever I want to do and do whatever before going to fight Nascour, because if I have to go fight Nascour after this gauntlet without being able to prep, I will be kind of annoyed. Especially because he's ba Then again, they gave me the Master Ball, and in this game, that's basically an instant kill to whatever Shadow Pokemon I want, but still. Still. Th this power, it's beyond unreal. Whatever you say, dude. Please don't send out Nascour. Please say that I can walk towards the Diddly D and do whatever I want. Never mind, the game's bad. I hate this. <laughs> you should probably use that soon. Like, I assume that the, this guy is gonna have a big old Shadow Legendary for me to use. I don't like this gauntlet. I think it's meant to emulate the, uh, the, the Final Four, but I, I kind of dislike this. <laughs> yeah, the Master Ball. Bravo! Why not become a Cypher Show Battle Trainer? Would you even consider it? I'll vouch that you will become a top star in no time. I wouldn't have minded making that proposition, but I'm afraid I'm not that big-hearted. I will destroy you in battle right now. You will know the humiliation of total domination before this crowd! I dislike this primarily because I haven't had a chance to heal at all, and I hate that. This is worse than the the final four, or whatever they're called, I forget. Because at least then, I could go and heal between them. Here it's like, you go and you go and you go and you go, and it's like wearing me down. Or did they heal me for the final battle? I forget, let me check my Pokemon. They healed me for the final. Okay, that's weird. That feels inconsistent. <laughs> like, I don't know why. That that, that bothers me. Because, like, during the actual gauntlet, but before this, no heals. Then this, they heal me. Feels inconsistent, but okie doke. Slightly bothers me. I mean, it helps me in my favor, and there's no music. I don't know what that means. It's just the cheer. The cheer is the only music. But I still do think that that gauntlet hurt the 
shadow Pokemon capturing mechanic a bit. Kind of makes it a bother. Especially if the capture rate. If the capture rate was less... Oh, hey, you're just dead. I think the music will come in eventually. Yeah, probably for a big old moment. It's just interesting that there's, like, nothing. Not even a small beat that we'll pick up later. Dusclops. You should be able... Oh, but you used to... Uh... Oh, hey, attract. You bastard. They're doing the thing that Venus did. Just hamper everything, and I hate it. I guess we'll blast at you if you can get by the confusion. But I'm not attacking Whale Wren! That's bullshit. <laughs> That's... I hate that. Affection annoys me greatly. And I, I dislike the, oh, we're going to uh, do multiple status effects that technically aren't status effects at you. That annoys me greatly. I don't even know if they'll break out of the affection or not. <laughs> Attractive walrus. Apparently. Yeah, that, that bothers me. <laughs> that bothers me that, oh, it's attracted to Whalerin, so it can't attack the other Pokemon. So it's basically bullshit. I hate it. Like, at least allow me the tactics of attacking the other Pokemon. At least. Game. I hate attract. Oh, I hate you. Stop it, please. It's basically perfect paralysis, because it doesn't let me do anything, and I hate it. And even worse, it can be stack on top. It can stack on top of freaking paralysis, too. So just like, oh, mega waster time. Loathe it. Loathe it lots. And a Gardevoir. Oh, hey, this is where I would use uh, the, the bite attack, but I can't because uh, <laughs> attract is stupid. <laughs> Just the fact that it completely shuts down bothers me. Again, I really want to use Aurora Beam on the Whale Wren, but he's like, oh, water resists ice for some reason. Isn't that a fun time? And you know Thunderbolt. I guess that kind of makes sense. You're an all-rounder to a degree, but that's very annoying. And you're probably gonna one-shot now. No, never mind. You're going for Umbreon. I feel like that should, like, um, immediately break them out of... Attract. I'm getting very tired of... The big ol' big ol'... Ooh, strategy. Strategy is annoying here. Whalerin is water ice. At least that would make sense. Kind of neutralize it. But like, I feel like I even used Aurora Beam on a non- I- like, non-ice type, and it's- like, water ice type, and it still was- Aha, you fool! It does nothing! I felt that I had more Hyper Potions. I think it's stealing Hyper Potions from me. I think we should just let Frost die. You're not gonna help much, I think. Because this game is mean. I guess we can try. Oh, yep, you get to go first. Because I don't get to do nothing. I don't get to do nothing. I mean, I guess I could throw you out, but... Does ice resist thunder? Don't think so. I beg of you to not use attract and go first. If it uses attract and it goes first, I am going to be... Very annoyed. I'm going to try and break out. See if I can at all. Please go before it. I loathe attract. Oh, but it went through anyway. I don't understand attract. <laughs> like all the other times. Damn it. I. It. It's confusion, but without damage. I don't like it. It bothers me. 
And it went through anyway. I feel like that should just be a, like a normal status effect so you can cure it. <laughs> like poison, burn, and sleep. If, but I don't know why confusion and affection aren't counted under that. Maybe they're like, oh, if we uh, allow them to heal that, then they'll be useless. It bothers me greatly. Hopefully, now that whale wren is obliterated, we shouldn't have much to worry about. I think I'm just gonna... Let me check my Pokemon. Who's dead? Just Frost. Hmm. I guess I could try and thunder you. You're gonna nuke my poor Lemmy Lemmy? Of course you are. Now that whale wren is down, hopefully attract is out. I swear, if it's like, who is attracted to Whale Ren? I'm gonna be bothered. And Sky Uppercut. What the fuck, game? Is Dark weak to fighting? News to me. I guess we'll throw Father out so we can resurrect the boy. Go back up to revive. Revive you. And try to blast you. Blows up chicken with mind. And who are you going to send out next? Metagross. Okay. And it's a shadow Pokemon. Probably will just nuke it down because... Well, you're annoying, aren't you? I'm just gonna fire blast it. And uh, return you. See if it works. <laughs> Let's see what your destiny bond does. And that's annoying. That is very annoying. You are a very bothersome little bitch of a boss, aren't you? Now the question is, who do I send out next? I guess Bianca. Because it might try to do earthquaking, maybe. Of which you'll at least be alive to do healing. What do you mean, missed, you fucking bastard? Bugger off. Is this the ultimate diddly D? Diddly D guy? That would be kind of amusing. What do you mean, game? Oh, it missed twice in a row. Oh, at the final boss. And he got a critical hit. Are you high, game? What the fuck is wrong with you with this RNG? This feels targeted. I swear, every single time I go to fight a fucking boss, the game just does evil little things like that. For no reason. Fine, we'll do Sunny Day to at least try and up our chances. This is very annoying. I don't like it when the RNG is just like, Surprise! We have decided uh, to make it very painful for you today. Especially when the RNG hardly ever affects the enemy at key moments. At least it's not trying to do, like, earthquakes. That would be bothersome. Now, will the Fire Blast please land? And Confuse Ray. Thank God. If it missed three times, like, and I'm not, yeah, I'm not even going to bother cap trying to capture you. After all that, no. Not at this point. I'm too low on resources to want to bother capturing a Pokemon that I'm not even going to put on the team. And that is one of the big downsides of the Shadow Pokemon mechanic. Could use the... Could use the Master Ball. But... Eh, I don't know. I don't know what the game's going to throw at me. I don't trust it. I don't trust it. No. There's no... This can't be. I don't trust it. 
I, I expect more shenanigans from it. I don't trust it. Gah! It's not over, Neon. Come on, we shall battle. Enough! Don't embarrass yourself, Nascar! Who's this? Is it... Is it the mayor? Is it... Is it the mayor? <laughs> I swear to God, if it's the mayor! Sir, I... I beg your pardon. What's going on? Nascar is apologizing? Isn't he supposed to be the boss? I knew it. I knew it. Nascar leaving your house had to mean something. He's your son, isn't it? My, my. That certainly has a battle worth seeing. I must be honest with you, I never imagined that you would get this far. Huh? Mr. Mayor? Why are you here? Oh, dear me, do you fail to understand still? You're such an innocent child. At times, I am the affable mayor of Finnac, and at others, I am the secret boss of the criminal syndicate Cypher. I am Evi. Evice? And I shall rule the world! <laughs> and he turned super spiky. How dare you meddle in our affairs so thoroughly! The Shadow Pokemon plan we can resurrect from the start, but you two... You'll never be forgiven. I'll destroy you utterly, so you may never again rise against me. Please game heal me. Please game heal me. I'm just gonna say it. Far too many battles in a row for this with no chance to do anything. I don't like it. I don't like it. I just do not like having my like, options uh, restricted like this does seem like they healed me. There's at least that. Alright, who should we bite? I'm gonna try... Try that. And you use X attack. We should probably nuke you. And you also... Oh, he's using items, so no. I never use items. And a critical hit, and it still didn't kill him. I actually did grinding. <laughs> I went out of my way to grind, and it doesn't seem like it's gonna be enough. Like, I honestly don't know how I'd feel if I got soft- well, not soft locked, but if I got- hit a brick wall with this boss. Yeah, because I actually did grinding. A hell of a, a healthy amount of grinding. And it's a one-hit shot. Yeah, sure. Sure game. Sure. Sure. I feel like they went a little too much on the... And now we've got to be difficult. Kind of bothers me. Ever so slightly. Granted, he did start up using items, so I don't know. I would use Confuse Ray, but it never works for me. I swear, every single time that I use Confuse Ray on the enemy, while I'm also confused, I will always have worse RNG, so I just... Don't bother, just do use attacks. Just use attacks. That is the only way to do things. Trying to use strategy is meaningless, because these this, the AI is mean. Ah, I wish I got a crit there, just kill you. Hmm. I guess I'll get rid of you. Use a revive on Espeon, so if we bring them back, maybe we can do a thing. Are you gonna one- well, I guess not really one-shot, but take out. Okay, dear god. And it killed it. Again, I missed the ability to swap out Pokemon upon taking out a Pokemon. Like, I kinda get it, but- Oh, hey, super effective. And by that, it means do very little. 
And that's gonna one-shot as Umbreon, isn't it? Critical super effect of the RNG is so evil! I never get good RNG against bosses, it feels like. I hate this. Oh, this is painful, man. Oh, this is so painful. I swear I'm... It feels like I'm using double the items against these guys, and I hate it. And Earthquake! Which works enough. Oh yeah, I forgot, you're also electric- Oh god damn it, I hate this! <laughs> I hate it when games leverage RNG, and well at least I killed his friend. But it's like, killed everyone out there. I'm just- I'm bothered because it's such a like, kind of a slog. Oh look, another super effective crit. Thank you, game. I didn't expect him to live, but I had a little hope you wouldn't be cruel. Because the only reason I'm bothered is because it's after such a big, uh, like, walk here. It's taken a long time to get here against a lot of strong opponents. So it just feels a bit funky to throw such an unescapable gauntlet at the end. Again, it feels like I'm using double the healing items when I use one, and that also bothers me. It's like, it's all psychological. Functionally, it's probably fine, but it's just ever so slightly. Ever so slightly. It's given to me, and I don't know why. There is a glitch to duplicate the Master Ball. I think I actually know about that. Thank you for reminding me. I'm going to use that against you. Dear friend, is that your Shadow Pokemon? It is. I'm going to one-hit KO your Tyranitar. Also note that it is five levels lower than all his other Pokemon. He threw it out, and it used a move. That's very mean. But yeah, thank you for telling me of the glitch. Or reminding me of the glitch, because if I remember correctly... I think I know how to use it. Because if I remember correctly, what you need to do... I'm sorry that I wasn't notified that it started. <laughs> oh, it's no problem. <laughs> really, it's mostly me being going like, oh god, this gauntlet is evil. If I remember correctly, what I need to do is use on first turn... Select, go to items, then how do I make it go up? I forget how to make it swap. Swap. There we go. I believe that's how you do it. And if it doesn't, oh well. My bad. I'm going to Aurora Beam you. Oh, Sandstream. <laughs> also, Tyranitar has Sandstream. Yeah, I do believe that that is the glitch, and if it isn't the glitch, my bad. I have been bamboozled by self. I should have been practicing it. I don't know if this will do much, but Aurora Beam, I guess. And used Earthquake. God damn it. And that's gonna, yep, kill you. Oh, that's very bothersome. <laughs> Live, please. Thank you. And the sandstorm rages. And here I thought that the final, like... He was like, oh, they have the ultimate shadow Pokemon. I thought it was going to be like Kyogre or uh, Groudon or something, but I want to check. Master Ball's still there. Haha. <laughs> Suck. I wish I'd been earlier to give you step-by-step. Step. Ah, it's... It's mostly like, uh, been the design that's eaten away at me. I don't think it's too bad. I think I was doing pretty well on my own, overall. And I shall revive my Espeon. Unless, uh, Bianca wants to step up to the plate and kill this guy. Probably won't be able to. I do believe. That Espeon should be able to nuke this guy down. Please, I beg you, game, let this be the end of the gauntlet. 
because this is like, I believe four or five, this is the sixth battle, I believe, in a row. You know what, I probably should have been using the, sha the, the glitch with the Master Ball, but I completely forgot about it. I'm more so on the glitch, not the Vex game, <laughs> my bad. Oh, no problem. I more meant like thought like uh, getting little tips and tricks from you. Wait, I, if I remembered the glitch, I would have been capturing all these uh, Shadow Pokemon left and right. If I ever, like, replay this, I'm going to abuse that function, that glitch. Because it does feel like they weaponized the Shadow Pokemon capture feature a bit too much in late game. Were you able to get Raikou? Nope. <laughs> the game was mean and gave me a critical hit at one point. And that's when I just said, ah, screw it. <laughs> it also didn't help that he was low level. He was still level 40 when everything else was like level 48. <laughs> no! Even my ultimate Pokemon! Why were you giving legendaries out to the admins? Oh, hey, Shurls! How'd you get here? <laughs> that, that, this amuses me. Also, this guy is just floating in the air like an evil demonic Eggman. But, yeah, like, Raikou was level 40 and they didn't level him up, I guess because they didn't want people to be like, utilize it as a free level ups, free grinding, I guess. So they're like, ah, we're going to keep him the same level. So he got crit and died and I'm just like, I'm not going to reload. <laughs> oh, well, beating this guy shall give you access to beat him. That's at least nice. Halt! Stop where you are! There's no getting away this time! Oh, hey! It's also duking! Cypher's finished! The Shadow Pokemon plan ends now! And... <sighs> Rui, are you alright? Oh, that Pikachu is pissed! Big Pikachu! Blast you! Don't you forget what you've done, Neon! It won't end this way next time. I will ruin you the next time, I promise you that! And then they just have an escape helicopter? No, he's trying to escape with that helicopter! <laughs> Let us meet again! Our bid to take over the world using Shadow Pokemon hasn't ended yet! And it just got blown up! Oh no, something came to attack! Your plan? I think it just ended. What? Who did that? Who nuked it out of the sky? In the next fight, he'll probably be level 40 as well, so I'll need to be very careful. Basically, use Umbreon's turn to heal Espeon as I swift him to death. Evice, you and your cronies are under arrest! Oh, wh what is that? Oh, oh! Interesting. It's a legendary Pokemon! It's a Ho-Ho! It is! It really is a Ho-Ho! It's incredible! It must have been keeping an eye on your heroics from the sky above. You obviously earned its support. Of course, it would also never allow criminals to get off scot-free. Not when they're guilty of an outrage like creating Shadow Pokemon. Oh wow, so Ho-Ho is watching over us! Neon, I guess it's finally over. We faced a lot of challenges, but thanks to you, Neon, everything has been resolved. Unless there's, like, post-game story, which I don't know about. Neon, thank you. You were strong, you answered the call, and you were cool. Look at that! Oh, it was so close! It's true! This is the first time I've seen one up so close. Rui and Neon, the ho is blessing you for your victory. Such a perfect outcome, yes indeed. I wonder if you'll ever get to face Eogun. I wouldn't be surprised if he was like... Maybe the... Maybe real Gam Tower becomes an actual Colosseum and he fights there? <laughs> Neon is very cool. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that's it. Ah. Took me about... <laughs> about three hours to get here. But yeah. I gotta say... I do think that final gauntlet is a little bit cruel. Especially because it seems to flip-flop difficulty-wise. It wasn't consistent. It felt like a normal Colosseum battle, but it didn't heal you between the normal gauntlet. But then once you got to Nascour and Evice, it healed you. Okay, that's a cool effect, having the Shadow Pokemon fly up there. 
And I also think that is one of the downsides of the Shadow Pokemon feature, in that, at least, like, I assume you'll be able to go and find and retry various Shadow Pokemon battles to try and get the Shadow Pokemon that you missed. Because some of them are retriable immediately, I assume others will be retriable after the fact, but the fact that so many Shadow Pokemon were locked in that gauntlet, a bunch of cool Shadow Pokemon too, but they weren't healing you during the gauntlet, yeah, it kind of feels like, <laughs> honestly, it kind of feels like somebody put in the, like, uh, Pokeball glitch purely to allow you to catch all the hard-to-get Shadow Pokemon. <laughs> that is what it kind of feels like. Because that difficulty spike felt a little too spiky. Because a lot of it was, did feel like... Like they were leveraging the Shadow Pokemon against you. Hmm, some of them. There are unfortunately some missable ones. That's kind of annoying. I assume that, like... Hopefully the... well, hopefully. If I were designing this game, I would make it so that the gauntlet of Shadow Pokemon before Nascour would appear as Colosseum fighters elsewhere and normal Colosseums, so you could still go get them. It's just a little bit aggravating at the end because early on, Shadow Pokemon just kind of were there using Shadow Rush and they were kind of easy to get. Like, something needed to give when it comes to the difficulty of Shadow Pokemon, like the catch rate or, like, something. Especially there at the end where they refuse to heal you between fights until the bosses. And then I don't exactly know why they then heal you between the bosses. It felt weird. <laughs> uh, the Cypher Admins? No, the the Gauntlet of Shadow Pokemon before Nascaur and Evice. I do think that the Legendary like Shadow Pokemon, should have been win rewards. You beat the admins, then they give you the Shadow Pokemon. I think, personally, as a neat little reward. Like, either that or allow me to save anywhere. That is another thing. Like, just like, any number of things. And then we're here at the diner. And there's still no news. Appar that is kind of funny. The news just kind of died halfway through. Either that or it just doesn't flash. Let's see. Who called me? Oh, net from under. New system done. We, that's myself and Sec and Pyrite, developed a new system of downloading data automatically to your PDA. From now on, information about Shadow Pokemon should arrive directly from people connected to the network. Check it out. And how do I do that? Through the snag list? Maybe? It does kind of tell you where some of them are. Gligar, Inte, Hitmontop. <laughs> but Snag failed. Never ain't seen. But yeah, just like, again, feels like they just ever so slightly weaponized the Shadow Pokemon. Because, like, early on, the Shadow Pokemon felt like a, a cool mechanic. When it came to, like, uh, like an alternative to wild fights against Pokemon. But then when it started to get weaponized against the player, it's a little annoying. Second Pyrite Town. Big guy, there's trouble. The Kid Network got word that a suspicious-looking Pokemon was spotted in Pyrite. I'd like to give you the full story in person, so can you come visit me? I guess while I give my final thoughts, I'll probably go talk to them. Not sure I'll pursue the post-game. Probably because the post-game, probably, revolves around taking on... I probably should have bought more Pokeballs. Then again, I can just glitch the Shadow... Oh yeah, I have... I can just glitch the Master Ball! I don't need to care about <laughs> honor! I can just glitch the Master Ball! Yeah! Let's go down! Wait, uh, are you... Which one are you? Are you with Duking, or are you in the Underground? But yeah. Just, like, the main problem with the that final gauntlet is it felt too gauntlet-y. Like, it'd be one thing if it was just battles. But the fact that it also threw the Shadow Pokemon in there and the Wiki Wonky not healing you but uh, for the four fights before Nascour, but then when you get to Nascour and Evice, then it heals you. A little weird. 
Well, hi guys, we just got some news. There's this rogue called Kale who hangs around Pyrite entrance. It sounds like Kale recently battled this creepy trainer. They say that this trainer used some weird Pokemon. I think you should have a talk with Kale about this. It also kind of bothered me when the enemy started using annoying strategy, like uh, a worn gear is on the floor, appears to be junk. I wonder if I could just find any old gear for that quest, or if some are just junk. But like, it'd be, but yeah, enemy using super strategy can be annoying in this. Especially when it's like, we're going to attract you, and then confuse you, and then paralyze you. Especially with the changes that they did to Confusion, apparently. Yo, we meet again, huh? About the Shadow Pokemon? Yeah, I remember battling one, sure. I had to call in to share with, I know. But only if you can beat me. You ready? But yeah, it's just like... Feels just a little bit mean of design at some points. Like, they get to a certain point in... I don't know. It also doesn't help that the level, of, like the range of levels, feel all over the place in the end game. With Nascour and uh, Evice going up into the 60s. That was so something mean. About the real gum rush, it allows you to replay the rush in order to re snag those Pokemon. Very good. The only reason that that becomes acceptable, like still with the, the rush, is because I can, uh, there's the glitch of the Master Ball. That is the only reason that it is acceptable here. And man, you just got tanky, didn't you? Also, when I super effect, doesn't do much. When he super effects, it basically kills me. And I didn't stack up on, uh, on my diddly D's. I ba 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 ba. Annoyed. Again, it felt like I was uh, double using hyper potions there at the end. Maybe it was like a Pokemon effect. Item usage is increased by two. I didn't mention it before because I didn't want to help <laughs> spoil the experience. <laughs> Did this guy just, like, steal some of the teams that I fought back at the real Gam Tower? Yeah, it's just like... It does feel at the very least that the gameplay of capturing Shadow Pokemon clashed with the difficulty of Pokemon battles there at the end. And that's disappointing to me. Because a lot of the fun of Pokemon is capturing Pokemon. And they did try... Like, I do like the overall system for the most part of the Shadow Pokemon. It's fine for the most part. Ever so slightly. It just has a bit of a annoyance when it tries to become more difficult. When they try to add more... Like, stakes to the battles... Why is this Gardevoir so fucking tanky? I hate it. The Under now has a secret. Oh, boy. The Rush is super hard and spiky. Yep. If it was a little less spiky, I think I would enjoy it more. But yes, yeah, so just something needed to give there. <laughs> just ever so slightly. I guess the shift tree knew that it would burn to death, so it used the drain on any Pokemon it could. The secret is something I recommend leveling for. Well, that's kind of a shame then, because... Like I said, I'm not really all that interested in doing the post-game to this game. If there even is a post-game all that much. 
Especially because leveling in this game feels a bit slow. There doesn't, like... Because either fights are kind of tedious, or... Like, I don't know. There's, like, that ending spike of difficulty and stuff kind of... Kind of puts me off a little bit. And leveling up... Like, uh, it's not... It doesn't feel like there's an efficient leveling up in here. Mount Battle and this secret. That's basically it. Don't really care too much for Mount Battle. And the problem is that, like... Hmm. What I guess I could do is, like, plan out what I'll play after Pokemon Coliseum. Grind a lot. And, uh... Then try to... Set it up so that I can go... Do the secret. Because I don't really care to do Mount Battle all that much, because... I think it goes, like, all the way to level 100? Granted, you can do, like... I was informed by you. But you can do, like, 10 battles, save, and then I assume can do it. Because I didn't do Mount Battle. Just, eh. Felt too Battle Frontier for me. It, 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 Mount Battle just instilled fear in me. Oh, no, not Mount Battle, but the Battle Frontier instilled fear of me of battle locations. But yeah, I don't know, because mainly it's the fact that grinding to an adequate level feels like it would take a long time to then get to the secret. Because that's the, that's the only real downside. Because the grinding to... Like, I don't think I even grinded any Pokemon up by 10 levels in the grinding that I did. And it felt like it took forever. Mount Battle has single battles and double battles, apparently. Interesting. Because this game is pretty much only double battles. I think there might have been, like, one? That maybe? Oh, it's been a futile struggle every time! That trainer used a Shadow Quilava. The trainer's name was... Uh, I forgot. He did say something about the Snagum hideout, though. That'd be amusing if Evice and everyone was in here. Oh, I can't talk. Oh, there we go. Hi, you two. We blew it. Our prisoners broke out every last one of them. I reckon they realize that they make easier targets for their organization when they're caged. Well, that's kind of funny. The only major issue with getting the major secret of Mount Battle is that if you don't get all the Shadow Pokemon purified, it's not accessible. So basically, it's super missable content. That's that's very main. So I basically have no real reason to do Mount Battle then. That's kind of disappointing. But then there is the under secret, like. Because I kind of do want to do it, but the fact that apparently it needs... You recommend leveling. Hmm. Which kind of... I don't know. Actually, I did find a way to get all the Shadow Pokemon you've missed. Neat! At least there's something. I wonder... I don't know. Because the difficulty spike that the game threw at us kind of makes me think that the post-game of, like, going to the Snagum hideout and the secret in the under will also be kind of similar. And again, the grinding. It's like, I don't know if I want to do it. I'm not sure. Like, a part of me does, but at the same time, I don't know exactly how much it is and how much it'll be difficulty annoying stuff. So I do not know. And again, the grinding. It takes a while in this game to grind. Hmm. I guess it does help that I have the Master Ball glitch on my side. So I can do that, at the very least. If I really wanted to. That could maybe 
do stuff. Because mm. it also depends on, like, how big of a level spike the secret in the under has. As well as the difficulty, but then again, the spike kind of did spike a lot. For most of the game, like, the game started at, like, level 30. And then, for most of the game, it was like, oh yeah, 30 to 40, and then you kind of stuck in the 40s, and then jumped up into the 50s and 60s out of nowhere. Uh, well, for the secret in the under, the mons there, aside from uh, shadow Pokemon, are probably, yeah, pretty tough to handle. I'd get one shot all over the place. I don't know. Hmm. Should I tell you the levels of Pokemon Secret? I'd say so. Because that would at least give me context for what the game expects of me. Because, like, it, all, it would also tell me, like, what to aim for-ish if I do decide to grind for it. Context is nice. Then again, this guy also kind of provided context because he was in the upper 50s. So I could assume that maybe the post-game goes into, like, the 70s. I'm just trying to think. But I guess overall I'll give my thoughts because we'll probably be ending. Yeah, we'll, well, I think we'll end here. And then after I get, like, the levels of the Mons and the Secret on, in the under will dictate whether I want to grind or not. <laughs> but yeah, overall, I really liked Pokemon Coliseum. Like, I would say up until the second Venus fight, the game was really, really fun. And then it was only like specific moments that were annoying afterwards. 60 through sh uh, 70, and one is a Shed Ninja. You always gotta look out for the Shed Ninjas. Because yeah, that's the problem, is... I would have to level up a lot of my Pokémon. Like... That's a lot of leveling to do, and the grinding in this game takes a while. And the most efficient way to grind is to have an EXP share and in the front of the party. But that also, like, uh, if they're not good for the fight, takes a while. Just, meh. Like, I don't know. Like, I might intermittently do a bunch of grinding and eventually, maybe, come back and do the post-game and stuff for this. But at the same time, that amount of grinding just feels bulbousome. But yeah, 60s and 70s for the secret and the under just feels a bit mean. Ever so slightly mean. Because, like, with grinding, I got to level 51 with the Pokemon I used the most. And that was with, like, two hefty sessions of grinding. It's like, I don't know. But yeah, overall, for like a good 70% of the initial before credits game is very, very good. There are some annoying moments, like the Shadow Lab, I think, is a little annoying because they decide to break from the other dungeons and not put save station. Well, they did put one save station. They put one save station in there. I take that back. But they didn't put any heal stations, which broke the flow a bit. And Ein jumps you at the end, which is a little annoying. Sure, get it, he's smart, he's tactical, but... Again, it, it makes the Shadow Lab stand out from the other dungeons and just makes it feel weird. Mount Battle is never lower than 50, but scales to your strongest Pokemon. So the Mount Battle is Battle Frontier, and I hated the Battle Frontier. <laughs> Because that is the exact same thing of the Battle Frontier, where they scale to your strongest Pokemon, but <laughs> they all start at 50. And it's just it is pain. Oh. But, what was I? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Shadow Lab just feels, like, different from all the other dungeons. I do like the DNA sample, like, code puzzle. That's kind of fun. But 
them making it so that you can't heal in there unless you use items on top of... Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Where should I go? I'm gonna, I think I'm going to go try and... Because I don't want to go to the under in case that activates the secret. I don't know where it is. But I'm going to go to the various places to maybe stock up on heals. Maybe. Although I did find their highest is 70 so far. I assume Mount Battle. Interesting. Never lower than 50. But then goes up to 70. Very interesting. The Shadow Lab and Realgem Tower are probably the most controversial part of the game. Because, like, for me, Real Gam Tower isn't terrible until the vi Well, even the ending isn't super terrible. I think it just is a bit inconsistent. And could have, like, been a bit better in terms of weaponizing the Shadow Pokemon feature. That's the main contentions for me. They're definitely the lesser part of the game to me. They hurt the amount of fun but they weren't terrible. Personally, I dislike Shadow Lab a bit more because it's a full-on dungeon that's different from the others. At least with Real Gam, they give you a heal station and a save station that's past a bunch of, like, loading animations, but oh well. And f refighting the Cypher admins was pretty fun. And then the extra people when you get to the elevator. And uh, personally... The Snagum boss is so weird. Snagum being a part of the, like, cipher the entire time feels weird. Like, uh, uh, my brain conjured the idea that Snagum would come in at the last minute and using, like, salvaged, like, individual Snagum balls, they would start snagging a bunch of shadow Pokemon from Cypher for, like, an ultimate endgame climax that would bring it to a close with uh, the player character, Wes, going back to the hideout for a final confrontation, but then I guess we are kind of going back to the hideout for the post-game, so who knows? So, yeah, I don't know. But again, it, the main reason with the real Gam Tower being bothersome is the final rush, the real Gam Rush. There's six fights back to back. And for the first four, you can't, uh, you don't get healed. And they don't even allow you to use your items in between fights. You have to do it in battle. It's kind of weird, uh, frustrating. Especially on top of cool Shadow Pokemon being there that distract you. Which, is, granted, that's nullified once you <laughs> utilize the glitch, but most people won't know about the glitch. Uh, the Snagum base is the key to unlock the secret to the under, specifically if you beat Gonzap. At least the Snagum team gets a a little bit of a run back in the post game, so. Okay, I will try to do some, like, grinding, and then we'll see about the post game and see. They definitely fixed this in uh, XD Gale of Darkness. Thank, thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you. I like that. I do like that. That is very nice to hear. Because I will be playing Gale of Darkness eventually. Let's see, where was my thoughts? But yeah. I do find it weird how the real Gam Rush goes from not healing you in between fights to then healing you between the two main bosses. That's a little weird. And again, like, the Shadow Pokemon... Like... I'm conflicted on the Shadow Pokemon as a, like, a, a, a feature. In the beginning, real fun and cool way of still having the ability to capture Pokemon without having random wild battles. That is a very cool thing. It's just that they overcomplicated it. Because, to my mind, you shouldn't make the Shadow Pokemon fights too difficult or else it becomes a hassle and a burden upon the player and then they'll just like, end up like I do, not wanting to bother to risk my items and Pokemon, wasting time trying to capture the Pokemon, especially for the capture rate. Uh, well, if you don't want to, then don't do the extra stuff. I don't want you to suffer because I enjoy breaking bones. I will at least do some grinding so that we can check out the Snagum base. 
Because now that the Snagum base is opening up, I do want to experience that. But I will do some grinding. And we'll see. We will see about that. That'll be fun to experience, maybe. Because, again, the Snagum part, Snagum was like hardly at all part of this game. So I want to see what else the game has to say about that. And depending on how good the grinding is, then we'll go do the secret in the under. And at least that will be like one more stream if things go well, maybe. We'll see. I can always try to do a stream earlier to give me more time to do a full-on post-game punch-up, maybe. Who knows? That's another thing. A part of me is wondering if I should try and fully install a, a schedule, which would help with people getting here and being able to watch it on time. But I was like, I don't know. I just, I fear the moment that I do put on a, a schedule, my motivation will just tank, so who knows. I might try a small little bit. Who knows? I'll give it, a, I'll give it some thought. Thought on everything. But yes, overall, Pokemon Coliseum was a decent amount of fun. It just suffered from the, oh, we have to make it kind of difficult at the end. That's the main, just like, small little thing. And a lot of games suffer from that. We're getting to the end. We have to make it difficult. Like I said, some games really fall into that. I personally would have preferred it if they focused on making it, like, interesting and fun. But at the same time, fun is subjective. Who knows? I have gripes with the ending, but it wasn't terrible. I was able to get through it. <laughs> the Pokemon in the Snagum hideout are mid-50s. Gonsap has Pokemon in the 60s. Yeah, because I was probably going to level up my Pokemon at least to 60 roughly across the board in case I want to get to that. Cause, especially because if Evice Pokemon were poking at 60, I do assume that yeah, the post-game Pokemon would also be quite up there. And also, Kale kind of served as a nudge-nudge. Hey, you, <laughs> you need to be this level to ride. It does feel like a bit of a jump overall, since it feels like the majority of the game hung out in the 40s in terms of leveling, and then kind of poked into the 50s here or there with, like, some of the Cypher admins, and then, bam! Nascar and Evice, here to m make you pay... I still find it hilarious that I kind of guessed that the mayor was evil. Then again, Nascour leaving the mayor's house and it never being mentioned ever. Kind of big foreshadowing there. It's still, it's still kind of funny though. The unassuming mayor becomes an evil goblin. But yeah, overall I decently like this game. The character designs are pretty fun, especially for, like, the Cypher Admins and the main characters. The area is mm, kind of basic, but at the same time, it has interesting locations, like this foresty retirement village. The Under is cool. Real Gam Tower is kind of pretty. Uh, for difficulty, I do think the curve could have been evened out a bit more, maybe increase leveling speed just a little bit just, just a little bit maybe and I do find it a little like and maybe I think it would also be nice if like store locations were equalized a bit across the board so like once you get to a point they stock things so you <laughs> it is kind of like at least the outskirts I feel like the outskirts should be the ultimate travel stop to get like all your items so you can get like hyper heals there if you want. <laughs> I won't even lie to you. I didn't catch Ev uh, Evice at first. I always thought Nascar was just the mayor. <laughs> That's what I f said too. It's just like, could it be that Nascar is the mayor? Because like, Nascar left the mayor's house and the mayor wasn't there, but I think Mirror B and his colorful Power Ranger squad were. So, and then the mayor came back, so it was like, maybe? But uh, it, it is kind of, it was still kind of funny. Let's see, what other things, da, 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 thoughts? I do think Rui should have had a bit more to do in the story. Like, at the very least, I think it would have been cool if 
her only Pokemon, like, one thing that I, if I would, if I were to remake this game, the one change that I would make is Umbreon would be Wes's Pokemon, and he would start with that Pokemon. And then, when you go to rescue Rui, she has Espeon, so that just, it, it feels like you're a team then. That's what I would do. <laughs> Rui was objectified hard in this game. <laughs> This tall, big, bad, muscular guy just hides as a frail old man. It would be amusing, that. But yeah, Rui just kind of was only there as a shadow Pokemon detector. And I feel like she should have had a bit more to do. Like, and also, if you did have it be so Rui's po had Espeon as a Pokemon, and so that for your starters are kind of together and you throw them out and they fight together, I think that would be cool. And would even maybe lead to potential gameplay segments where Rui and Wes get split up for whatever reason. As, like, maybe chapters. So in one moment you'll be Rui and you'll go through a dungeon and then maybe if Wes... But who knows, that would maybe overcomplicate things, but it's like a possibility. Thankfully, Rui gets replaced as a scouter. <laughs> That's funny. We don't need a character following you. I will say, at least Rui's, uh, like, following around of the player, she doesn't get in the way too much. There was, like, one or two moments in the game where trying to walk towards Rui made it hard to get around places, but not terrible. Not the worst companion following you around thing. It's just I feel like she... Then again, at the very least, Rui is more of a character than Wes is in this game. Sorry, Wes, you're a nothing burger. We don't know why you betrayed the Snagums. We don't know anything about you. You were a criminal, a terrorist, you blew up some bombs, and then nothing. She feels a little bit, eh. Don't forget the time she went insane and off on her own. <laughs> yep, just got stuck on geometry and was just like watching me from the distance. But. There's a lot of cool moments in this game. I just feel like there's a lot of potential with a lot of things. Like, the kid network didn't feel like it really did much. A lot of characters felt like uh, they do all come back eventually, but it also feels like a lot of characters beyond Silva do one thing and then they're gone. I do like that Silva kept coming back, though. It, it just amuses me that he, like, goes to a place to do a thing kind of does a thing and then like gets the shit beat out of him and we don't even rescue him a lot he just like hey I did a thing go do it uh. I believe he broke off from team Snagum because they wanted to make his Pokemon shadow Pokemon and he rebelled because they were his and he empathized like that would have that would be cool like if they if this was more story based and character based and you were like yes playing as Wes but if Wes was his own character and we like learned I think that would be cool then again <laughs> If I heard correctly, they originally wanted Wes to be, like, the main evil bad guy of XD Gales of uh, Darkness, which is just kind of glad that they didn't, but at the same time, that means that the characters from this game don't show up in that game, apparently, which is kind of sad. So that backstory is kind of baffling in light of that wanted, what they were gonna do. But yeah, the music in the... Actually, I just realized, I don't think they really use too many, like, themes from other Pokemon games in this game for music. And the music is really good. The music in this game is very, very nice. Sometimes it's a bit low-key, sometimes it's weird. Like, when you fight Venus, and it has, like, the super ominous battle music that for some reason also played in the finals of the Fennec Coliseum, and I don't know why... It's like very low key and anxiety inducing music. It's very weird. Mirror B returns and makes references uh, to a in Gales of Darkness. Very interesting. Uh, to, uh, to Colosseum in Gales of Darkness. Very interesting. Granted, he is a fan favorite and probably the easiest to put into the game because he's a big bad bad guy, but not the worst bad guy. Also, I find it hilarious that Dakim, the big gold Hulk guy, he gives you the green card to get into Real Gem Tower. But also, he feels so out of place compared to the other Cypher admins. Like, with, like, 
Mirror B is basically the Act 1 boss, then Venus and the Underground is Act 2, and Cypher leading up to uh, Real Gam Tower is Act 3, and Venus interacts with Ayn, Ayn is referenced a lot, Venus takes up a lot of time, Ayn takes up a lot of time, Dakim is just there. <laughs> Dakim just exists to beat up the Mount, Mount Battle people. Then he leaps away. Then he returns as a re-battle right before real gam. And that's it. He feels like such a random guy compared to all the other admins who feel like they are a part of this organization. <laughs> I don't know. He feels weird. Evice is referencing uh, Gale of Darkness. Neat. Dakim is literally the hired muscle of Cypher. I don't even think he's hired. I think he just fought Nascau or lost him. He's just like, I find this guy cool. <laughs> I want to be a part of his group, Sinbai. But let's see. What other things? Yeah, the character designs are cool. The music is cool. The 3D models of the Pokemon are generally all right. I do think some of the animations are a little weird and wonky, but hey, there's a lot of Pokemon in this game. And granted, they also reused a lot of like animations from Stadium, I believe. But at the same time, I can kind of forgive that. Considering, like, I can only imagine that this was a low-priority thing for the Pokemon Company, so they probably didn't have too much of a budget. And maybe not even a lot of time to make it. So, I guess I can forgive some things. But let's see, what else, what else? But yeah, kind of wish that there was more story based around Wes and the characters. Made it more rpg What else? What else? Hmm. Thinking back on it, the opening up the Heart of Shadow Pokemon gimmick does kind of feel like a gimmick. Because, like, unless you really like a certain Pokemon and want to add them to your team, more than likely you're going to have your set team, well, from the start, you, from, the, from Pyrite Town. From Pyrite, you're gonna have a selection of Shadow Pokemon that you've caught, and you're gonna, like, stick to them mostly. With only a few times that you would swap them out. So I don't know. I don't know. That game also had special text for losing to him, funnily enough. Huh. That's interesting. Always like little details like that. But yeah, overall, this is a very interesting game. I just think that it could have been fine-tuned a bit more in certain places. Personally, I wouldn't call the Shadow Lab and Real Gam Rush bad, but I feel like they are a little mistuned. But I'll just say this, while they were kind of bothersome and annoying, I have played far, far worse. Far, far worse, and at least the ending felt nice. The ending did feel nice. All the characters coming in to help you. Ho-oh, blasting. I'm kind of surprised that Giratina, well, not Giratina, why do I keep saying Giratina? Kyogre and Groudon didn't show up. I was thinking that Groudon and Kyogre were going to be the ultimate shadow Pokemon, because the legendary beasts are shadow Pokemon given out to the admins, then, and they're on the cover. Why not those two? Groudon and Kyogre being given to the final two bosses would even work. Nascour would have one, Evice would have the other. <laughs> Far worse, yeah. Just recently, I played through Assassin's Creed 3, and. Oh. Oh. At first, I was like, oh yeah, I kind of like it. Just like going through it, but the more I played Assassin's Creed 3, the more I disliked it. The combat didn't vibe with the combat. The story in the end kind of wonky and felt like a waste of the Revolutionary War setting. It is The DLC, like, it, it's funny because the main character of Assassin's Creed 3 that you're playing through, the, the ancestor, is half British guy, half Native American. And I already kind of poked fun at that. But the one thing that I found funny is through the main game, 
it seems they're pretty respectful of Native Americans and try not to do any Native American stereotyping, as well, or any egregious stereotyping. Then they did the DLC, and the main main gameplay of the DLC is go on vision quests, fight animal spirits, gang supernatural spirit animal powers. <laughs> and it's just hilarious. Mild racism is the best gameplay mechanic of Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> Originally it would have been uh, Sun, but it turns out the villain of XD Gale of Darkness directly intervened. Interesting. I was going to ask about the George Washington Evil King DLC. I will say, like, the first episode, because the King Evil King Washington is broken up into three episodes. First episode, uh, kind of wonky, weird, and bad. Episode two, I loathe it because there's far too many enemies. The, gu the guard AI is far too aware. They just crank that shit up. Then in, like, the third one, once you are drained of the want to do anything but the lucid memories and the story, it doesn't become that bad. And the ending is actually pretty cool. Uh, the, the boss fight against Evil King Washington is actually a lot of fun. The best combat in the game, because it doesn't use the base combat. Instead, it uses the racism spirit quest animal vision powers. <laughs> and I just find that amusing. Also funny thing is in the main Assassin's Creed 3 game, all the Native American characters, for the most part, speak their the the that specific Native American language. I forget the name of the tribe they were using, and even far more forget how to even pronounce any of their names. My brain just short circuits, and I don't want to insult them by trying. But in the Evil King Washington DLC, all of them speak English, and I find that hilarious. <laughs> The Matoka. I don't. I forget if that's them. But yeah. Overall, Assassin's Creed Three is my least favorite Assassin's Creed, if only because the base gameplay is just so jank and evil, and I hate it. Oh yeah, and also they brought back the bonus objectives, and they do nothing, and they are bad, and some of them are buggy. Like at least the the bad bonus objectives in Brotherhood unlocked things. And the Revelations bonus objectives were fine enough that I didn't really notice them being bad all that much. Assassin's Creed 3 just ate away at my soul. <laughs> Nightwolf from Mortal Kombat's tribe. Right. Which is my favorite? It is split between Assassin's Creed Revelations and Assassin's Creed 1, funnily enough. The one made in 2007. The, um, with Revelations, it's because it's the peak of that era of Assassin's Creed, the Ezio trilogy, where Assassin's Creed 2 would have probably been the best were it not for the for uh, memory sequences 12 and 13. Memory sequence 13 in Assassin's Creed 2, before I played Assassin's Creed 3, was the worst Assassin's Creed uh, like gameplay I'd ever played. Although I will say about Assassin's Creed 3, one of the target's death scenes is genuinely the best moment in Assassin's Creed I've ever played. It was a cutscene, but uh, in an Assassin's Creed game that I played, that was the best. It was very nice. But yeah, when it comes to memory sequences 12 and 13 in, a, in the second game, it's because they were weird and were released after the game. It's like downloadable content. I forget if you had to pay for them or something. I don't know. But like, when I was streaming it, because uh, that... The whole stream should be uploaded on the channel by now. Is I was playing through it, and I had played through Assassin's Creed 2 years ago. But then I got to Memory Sequence 12, and I was like, wait a minute. I never played this before. What the hell? I looked it up, and they were, like, downloaded content released post-game. And I don't know why, but you can tell that they were made or released after the game was. Because the... The, it feels so much different than the base game. And Assassin's Creed 2's Memory Sequence 13 is just badly designed. Kind of like Assassin's Creed 3 in a way. Far too many guards in places. The guard AI is very strict and it's obvious that they wanted to, like, some designer was just mucking about 
It's been a long time since I played that, and I think I purged a lot of it from my memory. But the sad thing is, I think I remember liking the overall story of me Memory Sequence 13. Because it all is all about Ezio returning to his home, like a, his home city, after he was run out of it. After everything that started his journey. And I, it felt like a neat bookend to Ezio's story for uh, Florence. But the gameplay for that memory sequence is just so bad. So, so bad. I am just hoping that Assassin's Creed 4 has better base gameplay of stealth and combat than Assassin's Creed 3. Because I can take a lot of bad things in a game, so long as it is functional and isn't too consistently aggravating. <laughs> like, aggravation spikes and inconsistent gameplay are what drive me mad. <laughs> but I have rambled about a different games on Pokemon Coliseum for too long. Again, Pokemon Coliseum, lots of fun. Uh, the character designs are cool. Wish that there was more character character in there, but oh well. There's a lot of cool ideas here. I feel like there was a lot of passion for this world, for this game. Again, feels like it's definitely a spin-off. Probably wasn't given too much of a budget or time because Pokemon Company is like, ah, oh, we have to make the, the for the Game Boy Advance, guys, on the DS, come on. Uh, meanwhile, these people are like, we want to make a 3D Pokemon game and probably weren't given too much to work with. And they did a good job for the most part with this. The characters, the personality, the atmosphere, the overall idea of Shadow Pokemon is kind of terrifying and kind of cool. Uh, I do kind of like the ability, like Celebi and this forest like purifying Shadow Pokemon and the, and the mechanics of like lowering the darkness of their heart uh, so that you can like get more of their moves back. But at the same time, Shadow Rush is type neutral and does decent damage. It, uh, but at the same time, hyper mode kind of gets in the way, but you could maybe use hyper mode. It's like, it's very interesting. What's your favorite game of the year? Like, if you mean game of this year, I haven't actually played that many games this year. I've played a lot of older games this year, but not many, like, uh, new games this year. If you mean, like, game of the year across the ages, I have no idea, but... I think the only new game that came out this year that I played was Baldur Gate, Baldur's Gate 3, but only for a few hours. <laughs> it kind of activated my anxiety of like, oh, there's so much that I can do. Uh, uh, uh. I need to go back and play it at some time. Uh, but game that I played this year overall, hmm, that's hard to say because I kind of forget the games that I played this year. Wait, let me, let me check something. Because there is one way that I can tell what game I might have played and really liked. Let me see. It'll probably be the most biased thing if I am correct, but I think I might be wrong. Time is an illusion for me. <laughs> Time is a big old illusion. Um, technically, I did play a lot of Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team this year, earlier this year, but the main segment that I really, really liked from it was mostly last year, so I won't count that. But let's see. Game that I played this year. Oh yeah, I did play Fire Emblem Awakening this year. What games did I like play on my own time this year? I'm very bad at, like, playing games on my own time. I start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. All over the place. Because the beginning of the year feels like ages away. Ages, ages away, so it's hard to pin them down. <laughs> this is your favorite, don't worry. <laughs> but... If I had to pick a game that I primarily played only this year, I would say Fire Emblem Awakening. Fire Emblem Awakening was a lot of fun, and I played it all this year, I do believe. It was very, very fun. The whole 16-part series is uploaded to the Neon Isaac Games channel. I can relate. I'm struggling through Shin Megami Tensei 3 Nocturne myself. I need to get through the Persona games at some point. They also activate my like uh, my anxiety a lot it's because of like the time sections where 
like, oh, you have certain uh, certain action, certain amount of actions per day that do things. You can make friends with certain characters and like raise their affinity. Oh, uh, I like I remember playing Persona 4 Golden. I think I streamed it, and I got to the final. Uh, well, not the final boss, but the boss of the first real palace or dungeon. I forget what it's called. I think palace might be a Persona 5 term, but. Uh, I got to the boss of the first real dungeon in one day, and my brain and it's just like, uh, and I wanted to beat it, and I think that's the, my the main reason that I stopped playing it is because I wanted to beat that boss because it was the last thing, and it, I was doing the dungeon in a single day, and I think I heard some people say it's like, oh, that's not like, like I think I've heard conflicting things where some people say. It's super efficient to do a dungeon in one day, and other people are like, oh, you don't need to, and it just sets my brain off. Persona 1 and uh, 2 are far easier in that social time aspect. Interesting. What was your favorite character in Fire Emblem Awakening? Oh, there's a lot of characters. Uh, it's been a bit, and they're all kind of muddled in my mind. But I liked Lucina. Cro Honestly, I liked Krom. Let's see. Characters that I used a lot. I'm trying to think. Oh! Donal. Donal was a god. He was my monster. Oh, yeah, and then the drag... Oh, 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 oh her name? What was her name? I forget her name. The Rabbit Lady. I really like the Rabbit Lady. The Rabbit Lady uh, was very, very fun. And, uh... Like, I liked a lot of the characters. But I think she was one of my favorites. Who else? Because I had a, a few characters that I just kept in my my group that I kept using. Oh, Verid Viridian. I liked him. He was funny. I didn't use him nearly as much as I should have. And Noe. Really liked Noe. Pan. Yeah, that was her name. But yeah. Fire Emblem Awakening was a lot of fun. I was midway through Fire Emblem Fates. I need to return to that. I got distracted. So many games. Too many games. So many games. I personally don't like Persona 4, weirdly. <laughs> Interesting. I like Persona 3 FES the most. Because my goal with the Persona games is to play them in the order of Persona 4, Persona 5, then jump back to Persona 3. Because I hear that Persona 3 is kind of and in between of like Persona 1, 2, and then Persona 4, 5, they're kind of like different eras. And Persona 3 is kind of, it also depends on the version, I think, of Persona 3. Persona 3 is very unique and has many different things. Fire Emblem Fates has three versions. Well, it's kind of, I think, yeah, it's weird. I have the version that's like technically all three inside. And, uh, cause I was really liking playing through the Birthright storyline. And my goal is to play Birthright, Conquest, the Flippity Flu fanfic third version, and just see about things. Because I forget where I was in Fire Emblem Fates. Like, I haven't even started uploading that, because it was one, it's one of the series that I started playing, like, on my own time, but we're still recording it and let's playing it, but not streaming it, because for some reason, streaming those games uh, activates the anxiety brain. But yeah. Overall, I think I had a lot of fun streaming this year. Because it was like day before New Year's. Birthright Conquest, I actually abandoned. Birthright, I love. Yeah, because if I understand it, Birthright is standard Fire Emblem story. Conquest is weird and, like, does weird things. Interesting things, but might not stick the landing. And then crazy fanfic universe <laughs> third option is from what I heard. Revelations is difficult. Oh boy. Birthright I adore. Neat. But. Yeah, I guess I shall wrap up the stream and give my overall. Well, I guess I've already been given my overall thoughts of Coliseum. It's quite simple if you think about it as a Pokemon game. It is also kind of interesting because, like. They probably were thinking, how do we get rid of the walking between place to place so we can focus on certain things? And that's probably what led to them cutting 
the wild Pokemon. Or maybe they didn't want to do wild Pokemon, and that's what led to them not having really overworld stuff. It's kind of interesting. Again, like, the aesthetic of Colosseum is really nice. The idea of Shadow Pokemon and how to catch them is super cool. Really, the only thing that I would uh, say is an objective like critique is I really wish that there was more character story with like Wes and Rui. That's mostly it. I felt I feel like there was more story story and character stuff. And if the story was a bit expanded, it would be super duper good. But it as it is, still a lot of fun. Still a lot of fun. Uh, the pokey spots, I believe, were cut content in Coliseum. Interesting. But, for the most part, Coliseum will be done for now. I'll, I'll intermittently do grinding on my own time, and then eventually we'll come back with a super powerful team, and we will do the post game and at least check out the secret in the under. That is the goal. I'll put it onto the back burner for a while. But now I need to decide what to do next. I think I might begin next stream doing Ace Attorney Trilogy and try to begin finishing that off. And then I might alternate between Ace Attorney and something else. I'll have to decide because my brain is really leaning towards Explorers of Sky, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. Because I really want to re-experience that. <laughs> I have an evil thought. Ooh, then share that evil thought. Will to be the thought of evil? Depending how evil. Want to see? Because like grinding can be difficult. But I can still do it. Or maybe I can find a way to just insert rare candies into the game. Who knows? <laughs> oh yeah, hacking the Pokemon levels. Ah, we thought the same thing. <laughs> Skipping the grinding. I will definitely look into that. I'm not sure how easy that would be, because I think most, like, hex editor stuff is for, like, the normal Pokemon games. But I'll look into it. I'll look into, like, doing that. And I don't feel too bad about, like, cheating and hacking in this, because it's not like I'm going to be taking the Pokemon out into the actual Pokemon games and, like, trading them and stuff or fighting other people with them. So, yeah, I'll definitely look into that. Of which then... <laughs> but, yeah, next time we will probably be doing Ace Attorney. Returning to that, it's been a while. And maybe in between... Starting up Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky, which I can't wait for. I'm really in a Pokemon Mystery Dungeon mood, so yeah, I can't wait. But yes, thank you very much for watching and chatting with me. Dear chat, giving me thoughts, ideas, tips, and tricks. If everyone wants more from me, I have a link tree where I have all of my everything that I do linked in it. Linktr.ee slash Neon Icy Wings, found in link places, descriptions, and bios galore. If you want edited scripted content on YouTube videos, um, I'm, I'm gonna make them happen. Neon Icy Wings, the YouTube channel. For streaming, there's Neon Icy Wings on Twitch, Neon Icy Games on YouTube, and all of these streams eventually get uploaded to the Neon Icy Games YouTube channel. If you want art from me, like my little character in the corner, there's tons of art sites and social medias that I post to, Twitter, Tumblr, DeviantArt, all the same, blah, blah, blah. And if you even want writing from me, there are a few sites I've posted in my link tree for various stories I've doth written, although I might have to find a site for, like, original fiction, because those ideas are rumbling now. Or maybe I'll just... Maybe I'll publish them solo to Amazon or something. I don't know who knows. Let's see. Uh, what case are, am I on in Ace Attorney? It should be because it's in the Ace Attorney Trilogy Collection. It is the third game and should be the final case. Should be the final case. It is, I think, the fourth case. It's the one. 
I don't, I forget if this, I think it's only the fourth case. I'm not sure if it has a fifth case. It's a flashback case I was informed on. It's the one that has uh, Edgeworth on it in the, like, episode select for the third game. <laughs> the evil stare is awesome. It is one of my favorite expressions. It is highly applicable. But, where was I? Ah, yes. I have story writings linked in my link tree. And then, if people are super duper kind, I've also linked my Patreon in my link tree. So if somebody feels super invested and has billions of dollars, maybe throw one dollar at me to open up the darkness of my heart. <laughs> It's basically just a tip jar, so if people want to show their support there, they can in a simple, semi-easy way. Eh. <laughs> Dollary dues. <laughs> it is not the final case, sadly. Oh, well. It's still more... It's still fun. That's the thing. Ace Attorney Trilogy, lots of fun. I just dropped it because of brain. And I need to get back into it. But... I do believe that should be everything. Yes, YouTube videos, art, streaming, stories, everything. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm trying to do it all. I'm... And also, I guess, I'm trying to ponder if I should add a uh, schedule. And if you want to look for a schedule, it should be, like, for Twitch, it will be down in, like, the bio, like, description area of the Twitch stream. There will be a schedule thing there. For YouTube, it will probably be in the also description. I think they changed the description, but I should still be able to put a description there. Yeah. I will try to put the schedule there if it exists but in general i try to stream start stream around 5 p.m central standard time if people want to check in around that time to see if i'm streaming or not because notifications are evil eh. who knows <laughs> i'm really enjoying i'll try to spread the word across my friends thank you very much super duper and thank you for being a super chatter that helps me with this game because this is a really fun game. But having little tips and tricks, little hints and nudges, those are always really nice to smooth over a few bumps. <laughs> but, yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. And I hope to see you dudes next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.